Oh, hello, welcome to Low Dump. Oh. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, let's do a three, two, one clap. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> Low Dump. Hello and welcome to Lore Dump, the show where we take someone who hasn't played a game and we walk them through the full story. We do all sorts of games here. We do good games, we do not so good games, and we do great games, uh. like the Arkham games. Are you having fun, Chase? I'm having very much fun, yes. Why are you talking like that, Chase? <laughs> that was a bad bit. You had so <laughs> much you had so much time to think of a bit. <laughs> well, I was I was I was assuming he was gonna do a normal introduction. He threw me off my rhythm. Who are you? I want to see if you can keep up. I am Monty Zander. I am your host today, and I'll be guiding Chase. I'm going to dip my fucking head in a bit of <laughs> aluminium. And Neil. Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm going to be guiding them through Arkham Origins today. Um, Downing this mug of tea. I need a caffeine. No, it's fine. So we have covered Arkham Asylum. Then we covered Arkham City. We're covering Arkham Origins. And then after this, we'll be doing Blackgate and Arkham Knight. Um, by the time you're listening to this, Suicide Squad will be out. So how is it? Do tell us. Is it fun? My prediction, and I'll, I'll, I'll obviously yeah, yeah. this won't count for much because we'll be releasing this after, um, but I think I predicted 7 out of 10s from the big, um, and I think I'll think it's bad. But I, 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 I'm I calling like 7 out of 10s from the big. Uh, Apparently some of the big publications. So we, for context, or one, we were recording this a couple of days before it comes out, and a couple, some of the publications are yet to, rev- to get a review copy. Oh, no. I don't think they're doing... Uh, pre-release reviews oh, because dear. the previews were so bad so we'll see how that turns out but none of that we're talking about a good game today uh, we're talking about Arkham Origins so Arkham Origins why was this made? because they were already working on Night mm. so Rocksteady were working on Night and Warner Brothers just wanted all the money uh, it was Warner Brothers doing so a Warner so they thought Brothers. oh no we've got a couple of years to kill yeah Okay. Effectively. Um, so this is the worst art for the cover so far. Uh, I see that. I see that. I think it's quite cool art. So on the you've got Batman on the cover, and then next to Batman you've got Black Mask, Roman Sionis, who we mentioned a couple of times, but you haven't properly met. Who dipped his face in aluminium at his metalworks? The metalworks guy. Steel mill guy. Yeah. Steel mill. Um, sure. And we've also got Deathstroke as well. They're not the same person. Different people. They look, look like the them. same person. Why would they choose the two people with silver heads? Yeah. One of them can take his head off. Well, that came out weird. <laughs> Just pop it right off. Put it on the table. Um, I think the idea there is that he, uh, Black Mass is going to use that, that instrument to pull some teeth out. Uh, very similar to how Bioshock 2 was treated by 2K. Um, this was developed by Warner Brothers Montreal. WB Montreal, not Rocksteady. Rocksteady literally packaged up the asset, sent it over to them and said, have fun. Go nuts. They only had one request, which was, please don't give Batman the Batmobile in this, um, like as a gameplay mechanic, because Arkham Knight would get, eventually give us an actual Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Um, that was their only rule. So, yeah, this was to fill the gap, release gap, between Arkham City and Arkham Knight. Well, at least, at least it seems like a much, much nicer handing over of the reins than it was for Bioshock. It, it very much was. It was like, go with our blessing, have it, have fun with it. <laughs> um, it's an origin story. It's, it takes place before the events of Arkham Asylum. Um, and it released in October 2013. And um, so when this story picks up, Batman has been doing his Batman thing for about two years of vigilanteisms. So Bruce Wayne has traveled so the world. So it's not an origin story. Not not an origin story like the way Batman begins. Would you it's... want that? <laughs> yes. Bruce Wayne has traveled the world, learned his martial arts, come back to Gotham, spent some time beating Imagine up muggers. That. An entire one where you're not in Gotham, you're traveling the world learning martial arts. Mm. Becoming the bat. I think the idea they come up with this is very, very clever. But the thing for this is that it's an origin story in the sense that we are going to transition from a Batman we get in this game who is darker, angrier, more hateful to the Batman we get in in Asylum and City where he's saving people. And he's part one. We're just going to kick straight into it. No man is an island. Just like in all of the Arkham games, this takes place over one night. So this one is Christmas Eve. We open in the Batcave beneath Wayne Manor. A bat awakens to the sound of a television crinkling on a desk below. I love bats. They are a top 100 animal for me. Top 100 uh, animal? I, lo- I, I have a not pretty top comprehensive... 10, not top no, it would be silly. But a, ba- a bat is adorable. I don't know. If I could I say they're top 10. Fates. But you, you, I wouldn't be mad at you for that. Uh, I love a bat. They're very cute here. He's got his little snout and everything. Yeah. He's just waking up. Well, they're a little bit ugly, which I quite like that about them. 
So Vicky Vale, Gotham's number one reporter. Oh, she's already number one. At this point. Already number God, one. Like yeah. Ten years Good ago. job, Vicky. Yeah, this is why she's she's ten years at the one. top of the game. Yeah. She's catching us up on events. A winter storm is raging across the city. Residents are being urged to stay at home, which is why in your open world Gotham you don't have people walking <laughs> around. <laughs> That's how they do really it. Really smooth. Yeah. Bruce Wayne. Billionaire playboy philanthropist enters the Batcave and starts suiting up for a long night of crime fighting as we catch glimpses of Vicky Vale's report from earlier that night. A clip of an interview she did with Bruce, where she says, No man is an island, Bruce. You've been back for two years now. You can't expect us to believe that Gotham's most eligible bachelor is spending another Christmas alone. And then we hear Bruce's voice saying, You just ran out of time. So this Bruce is snippier. He's not fun. No, he's not. He's snippier, he's, he's, he's colder. He's also not voiced by Kevin Conroy. He's voiced oh. by, yeah, he's voiced by um, uh, Roger Craig Smith, who is a phenomenal voice actor. And honestly, I really love his Batman and his Bruce. Roger Craig Smith needs to voice Batman in more things. Why isn't he? Okay, so I'll tell you this now. Black Mask is your main villain of this game. Mm. You're dealing with other villains, but the Joker will rear his head eventually for a bit of time. And when he does, Hamill? he's not Hamill. And Hamill and Kevin Conroy like to work together, so the whole thing was... And the, the, the mentality was... Sorry, Joker's voiced by Troy Baker in this. Of course he is. Yeah. So he, he's now voiced Robin, did, Two-Face, and Joker. I did go do a scroll through um, through Troy Baker's uh, Behind the Voice Actors in the break. Right. And I do love that it was just... He's Joker, he's Batman, he's Commissioner Gordon, he's Robin, he's yeah. like four of the other villains. Yeah. He's done them all. The mentality at the time and the mentality WB Montreal have said is that... This is a younger Batman, younger Joker, so they wanted the voices to be a little bit different, um, which I kind of, I kind of understand. Fair enough. Yeah. Conroy sounds older. I can't and imagine wiser. Conroy doing a, a a young man's voice. No, no, um, not. I mean, you could get away with it, but I think this is fun, and Roger Craig Smith's great. So, Vicky Vale, uh, and he's like, "You just ran out of time." As Alfred, Batman's butler, enters the cave with a silver tray. Dinner is underneath. He sadly puts it was Christmas dinner, and he sadly puts it on the table next to a picture of Thomas and Martha Wayne. <laughs> Chase, remind me. Do you know Batman's origin story? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid I didn't study up. Well, it's fine. We'll, we'll get to it. No, a... we'll, we'll get, we'll get to it later. It's all well, you right. see, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Alfred, Alfred killed him. <laughs> and that actually it's going to be their, their corpses under that tray. So uh, the footage cuts to a press conference. Commissioner Gillian Loeb is addressing reporters. Julian Gregory Day, a.k.a. Calendar Man, will get the death penalty. Report he yeah. just wanted to... He just didn't know his son's birthday. <laughs> is that worth the death penalty? We've just... Uh, 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 Pete <laughs> yeah. behind the curtain, we've just uh, shown Chase the first episode of the excellent Harley Quinn animated show. It's and good. that's a joke. Calendar Man in comics, and, in, and it's kind of hinted at in collectibles in the Arkham games... Uh, sort of murders people based on calendars, like on ho on holidays and things like that. Um, he's a big part of the long Halloween. I guarantee I'm going to get comments about it on the Arkham City video. Um, so I will just tell you now, you can find Calendar Man in Arkham City. Oh, can you? It's really fun because he only appears on holidays. <laughs> so if you, yeah, because you're, you're in game clock and stuff. Uh, you're, you're, you're if you clock. set it to, to Christmas Day, for You'll example. find him and he'll be like, oh, it's Christmas Day. And then he'll tell you like a quick snippet of like a, a murder he did a few years ago. Um, it's very fun. Um, so yeah, reporters are asking about um, Calendar Man and the death penalty. And they're basically saying like, there's rumors that it wasn't actually the cops who captured Calendar Man. I wonder who ca actually got, got that, that cookie character. We see a young ginger Jim Gordon who at this time is just a captain in the police force. So he's not a commissioner yet. He snaps at one of the reporters and he says, there is no such thing as a bat man. And then finally, but the there is a man bat. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, and then finally, the news report is interrupted by a police broadcast. There's a breakout in Blackgate prison. <gasps> So uh, Arkham Asylum is not set up by this point. Everybody goes to Blackgate. That's it. Arkham Asylum was shut down years ago after Amadeus Arkham had a nervous breakdown. Um, so yeah, not reopened yet. Roman Sionis, a.k.a. Black Mask, has taken Commissioner Loeb hostage. There's a breakout in the prison. Oh dear, what are we going to do? Well, quick as a flash, Bruce finishes suiting up, which means we finally get confirmation after three games 
The Bruce Wayne is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> have you no have, have you used the image of the hot toys of <laughs> Batman to... from the Tim Burton one? Yeah, <laughs> Michael Keaton's Batman. So bats starts to get in the Batwing. A bat, a black bat-shaped plane. Alfred chases after him and is like, "You do realize it is Christmas Eve, sir?" But Batman doesn't hear. Why him. were you bringing him Christmas dinner then, Alfred? Wrong day. <laughs> It's actually not wrong, dog. Hey, yeah, you need point. Calendar Man on the phone. Come right, on. Tell you right no, now, this is, it was art. It was, art. <laughs> it was <laughs> hitting like 11.58. He's like, I'm just getting it here. You can have it in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Alfred has one like, desire in this game, and it is to make Bruce eat Christmas dinner. So <laughs> you've already poked a hole in that <laughs> art. I mean, I've that the first time that he has ever put in these games. Yeah as a character, and that's his whole bit. That's his whole bit. Um, so, yeah, so the mission is simple. Save Commissioner Loeb, stop Black Mask, but first stop on our tour of the prison is this man, Warden Joseph. So, one of Black Mask's goons is advancing on him with a baseball bat inside the prison, and the goon's back is turned to us as we approach. Warden Joseph sees Batman and is like, what is that? Behind you! And the good laughs and he goes, Oh, come on, you expect me to fall for that? Try someone original. But Batman grabs the gun, smashes his face into the concrete, and breaks his arm. <laughs> yeah, no just knocking out, no pacifying, doesn't care. He's younger, rawer, and angrier. The discipline is still there. But does he kill? Doesn't kill. No, still doesn't kill. Um, the discipline is still there, but he's a little less calculated, operating on brute strength and rage. He doesn't kill, but he's gonna make you fucking wish he did. <laughs> <laughs> So, with with hospital bills being what they are in the states, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the the gun hits the deck. Uh, Warren Joseph panics, picks up the baseball bat and swings it at Batman. But we slap it out of his hand, twist his arm. We don't break it. We just like sprain his arm uh, and knock him to the floor. And the warden, Warden Joseph, is like, I I heard rumors, but you're not supposed to be real. Where's Black Mask? Batman booms. I I don't know. He's he's here for Commissioner Low. Please don't hurt me. Batman turns and marches further into the prison. The second stop on our tour shows us a mysterious drone. Ooh. It's flying around the prison recording everything. Batman smashes it and takes his memory card. Uh, third stop on our tour, it's a waste of a drone. Uh, third <laughs> stop on our tour is a familiar face. Waylon Jones, AKA Killer Croc. He's looking a little leaner here. He's younger, more sprightly. He's still terrifying and creepy and he's still big, but using his massive jaws and sharp teeth, he bites and gnashes at anyone he gets in his way, but he's clearly smaller than he was in Asylum. Batman sees him from across the room as he rampages through and is like, what the hell is that? He hasn't dealt with anything like this in his first two years. Next to Croc is a man in a fitted white pinstripe suit. A black mask that looks like a skull is wrapped around his face. They say crime doesn't pay, Black Mask Sionis says. But someone ought to check the good commissioner's pockets, because they are lined with my money. And what have I got to show for it? My old man in the slammer? No, tonight things change. Tonight we're in charge. Inside one of the rooms is a huge metal cylinder, a gas chamber. And inside that is Julian Day, the calendar man. Black Mask's men are breaking him out of it. You know... I really just want to flip that switch and gas him, but it is Christmas Eve, and he is the calendar man, and he chuckles to himself. A little too long, really, but he's just very amused by his own joke. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, good one, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's difficult when you've got people who are paid around you to laugh whenever you make jokes, you know, you probably lose a little perspective. You need you need one Scottish pal in there, you know, to go, that mate, that was absolutely honking. That patter is shocking. Bang shot. <laughs> What's your question, Chase? Who came first, this or Red Skull? Because uh, they look like just oh, color Red swaps. Oh, Red Skull has been around since the 1930s, yeah, 40s. They, they just look like color swaps. Oh, uh, I see that. Um, but Red his Skulls. Mask is black. Yeah, and, and also his mask is color swaps. No, his mask is a kind of metal metal skull. Red Skulls is his like flesh. Yeah. 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 This is just a mask he's wearing over his actual face. This looks like when you're playing Smash Bros and you can press them and they change color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yes, yes, it does. Um, Black Mask's awesome. He's really cool. Um, you're gonna. I think you're gonna grow to love Black Mask a bit. Gillian Loeb is like, "What's all this about, Sionis? Haven't I always come through for you?" And Black Mask says, "You may have Gillian." But things have changed. We're starting with a clean slate, and you're not on it. What are you talking about? Killer Croc picks Gillian Loeb up and starts to carry him into the gas chamber. I'm not on it? After all that I've done for you! You can't do this! I'm the police commissioner, goddammit! The gas turns on, it fills the chamber, and Commissioner Loeb fucking dies. Wow. Croc, Black Mask, and his goons move on with Batman in pursuit all the way to the roof. But we're just too late. 
Black Mask gets in a chopper and it takes off. Croc's on the rear, but before he can leave, Batman confronts him. I thought I caught your scent, Croc snarls. Oh, I know I caught yours, Batman says, and his lip curls. Cue boss fight, Batman kicks Croc's ass, but as the battle goes on, it's clear that despite clearly being outmatched and struggling a little bit in this fight, he's cocky and he's arrogant and doesn't for a second doubt, doubt that he'll crush Croc into the dust. Eventually, Batman knocks Croc back onto a railing that falls outwards. A mile-long drop stretches out beneath them. If he falls, he'll be dashed onto the rocks. Croc could die. Batman could kill Croc now if he, if he was not careful. But Batman doesn't care about this. He leaps through the air, lands on Croc's chest, and he crunches a face into Croc's face. Your boss, where's he going? Only boss of me is me, Croc says. Batman hits him again, and it just makes Croc laugh. You want teeth, he says. I want answers. <laughs> Wait till Black Smash assassins get through with you. What assassins? Punch. Whoever wins is going to be famous and rich. One last punch knocks Croc out. Batman stands over his body and tilts his head. Well, at least we know he won't be ugly, he says. But then suddenly, what? So, yeah. well, he's like, oh, the assassins will be famous and rich. And then Batman's like, well, at least he won't be ugly. Why? Because I stopped the ugly one, I beat up Croc. Right, but you don't know, you've never seen the other ones. <laughs> they, could, they, they could all be just, just absolutely appalling to look at. He hadn't yet worked on his humor. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, He's not met the Joker. He, he, he this is why he leaves the wisecracks to Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he went back and he traveled the world again after this, starting under Comedy Masters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then suddenly, da -da -da -da, the cops arrive. <laughs> Captain My favourite superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Captain Jim Gordon and a handful of men level their guns on Batman. Hold it right there! We're taking you in, he says, but Batman taps a button on his wrist and the Batwing arrives, the plane. He, gra he grapples up to it, blasting off into the night. One of the cops look at Jim as Batman leaves. No such thing as a Batman, huh? Back in the Batcave, Alfred is waiting. It's clear that something lifts off of him when he sees Bruce is alive and well. Are you back for the night, sir? Shall I warm up Christmas dinner? Again, all quotes from the game. <laughs> no, Batman mutters. It's gonna be a long night, Alfred. I just ran into a human-shaped crocodile who told me Black Mask hired some assassins to kill me. He plugs in the memory card of the drone that he broke to see if it can tell us more. And coincidentally, that's exactly what it does. We get a nice cheeky list with lots of fun cinematography that tells us exactly who's out to get us tonight. <laughs> and we get our bosses, effectively. They were storing that all on the same drive? Like Some of these angles are devices. impossible. It's crazy. Yeah. So Killer Croc was the first. He's now taken out. That's a glamour shot. It, they are all glamour shots. Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, the world's greatest assassin. Deathstroke is awesome. badass. Yeah, yeah, if you're a Teen yeah. Titans fan, you'll know, you'll know that bit. Mm. But Deathstroke, but... He actually is the world's greatest assassin. It's very commonly kind of referred to in the comics that... If you're going into a fight with Deathstroke, prepare to lose, no matter who you are. Even Batman struggles against him. That's kind of like how good he is. Why is he not in the League of Assassins? He's a he's a, he's he's a, a hitman hit for money. money first. Money first. Money. League of Assassins don't care about money. They don't pay. So yeah, um, then we've got uh, Garfield Lynn's Firefly. Garfield! There are burns on 90% of Firefly's body. He loves fire, From this guy. From all that lasagna. Ha 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 ha. Then we get Copperhead, escape artist and specialties in poison. Then we get Floyd Lawton, dead shot, expert shark shooter, never misses a shot until, oh, except okay. for that one time in Rockham City when he missed a shot. Um, but generally never misses a shot. Uh, Lester Buczynski, the electrocutioner. It's a lot of bosses. Yeah. That seems like a badass one. Well, I don't really know how. Really don't really know how Batman's going to deal with all that lightning. Oh uh, yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah pretty pretty tough, tough stuff. Yeah. Shiva. Martial artist and assassin. And fun fact, uh, you only really learn about this in DLC that I won't cover. You can play Bruce Wayne training in South Korea, in South Korea. South Korea. Um, Shiva was part of the the order that trained him in South Korea. They have history. They know each other. Um, so yeah. Uh, and finally, Bane, master strategist and berserker. Oh, and with an even worse mask than this game. What? That mask is awesome. Bane is awesome. He's so cool in this game. Don't get it. This is the best version, one of the best versions of Bane in any form of media. I really love Bane in this. Um, so yeah, so we have our mission. Fight off the assassins, dismantle Black Mask's operation. It's going to be a long Christmas Eve. So looking at this long list of killers, Alfred wisely points out that seeing as none of the assassins know Batman as Bruce Wayne, they would all fail on their mission to be just 
stayed at home and watched It's a Wonderful Life. But Fair Batman, point. yeah. And ate his Christmas dinner. And ate his Christmas dinner. Yeah. But Batman's like, no, Alfred, you idiot, you fart in the wind. They'll put innocence in danger to attract my attention, and I can't take that risk. But so. sir, you've never even seen the end. The whole town comes together and everything is <laughs> fucking wholesome as shit. But yeah, not interested. So it's in reality, it's very clear that Bruce is just keen for a fight. It's a Christmas present to himself. So before we wrap up, Time for a side quest. Uh, just like in Arkham City, these are short and sweet. So I'm just going to add them, bolt them on to the end of each Like bar. me. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> side, side quest one. Um, as Batman heads into Gotham, he gets a little ping on his comms. But some of Gotham's radio towers are giving off some strange signals. That classic video game, go do the radio towers, shtick. Um, yeah, weird. So he goes to investigate. Go climb your tower, you need map points. Uh, that's literally what it is. You're going to do this a few times. Every radio tower will unlock. Like, this was 2013. We had we, 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 we didn't find that unforgivable yet. It was all his time. By the time we got here, Ubisoft's grip had already tightened. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he goes to investigate, and as he repairs the signal, a mysterious grating voice pops up to say hello. Well, 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 if it isn't the King oh, Thug himself, sake! the man says. What, what, what? What's the... Why are you reacting that way? It's the one slur. <laughs> the who? The Rizzler. No. The Rizzler. This is a new character. So the man is it the Puzzler? He's wearing glasses, shrouded in shadow and green lighting. Clearly, he likes the sound of his own voice. He's like, figured it was only a matter of time before you showed up. And Batman's like, who is this? And the man laughs and he goes, think of me as a puzzle, a mystery, one you're never going to solve. Enigma then, Batman growls. Oh, you must think you're so clever. Well, how's this for clever? I've locked down the radio towers. Looks like you can't fast travel. And also, I've hidden some riddles and puzzles all over the city <laughs> for you to crack. Gotham is sullied. It's filled with brutes who control this city through violence and intimidation. I went to get rid of them, Batman, to improve Gotham's intellectual and moral standing. But I'm not a thug like you. My approach is a bit more refined. So we have our collectathon. Bats repairs the. Towers. I'm certainly feeling rizzed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually quite close to a, a kind of inverse of, well, not an inverse. This was quite similar to the Robert Batten Bat movie in that it's like we're doing the same thing just with different methods. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's not Riddler. It's Enigma. So I feel like you're, you're conflating <laughs> this quite a lot. So we're not. We're, oh, it's not Riddler. It's Enigma. You're conflating this clearly. Batman said his name and everything. Are you saying that I can't be rizzed up by Enigma? You can be rizzed up by whatever you want to be rizzed up by. I, I'm feeling rizzed. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Didn't even have, have that word when we started doing this show. <laughs> no, we didn't. It's been so, a while. <laughs> so we have our, is that what it means? What does being rizzed up mean? Riz means, is comes from charisma. And right. if one has riz, right. mad riz, you can riz someone up, you know? God, language is a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> so, um, the Enigma is like, yo, I'm, I'm doing my puzzles. Go do my puzzles. Um, so we got a collectathon. Bats repairs the tower, solves the puzzles, and as he does, Enigma keeps popping up to mock him, and we get some interesting insight into whoever this mysterious man might be. He's mm. an Enigma. Yeah, you got to really think about this if you're going to figure out who it is. So, Enigma has collected loads of blackmail on Gotham's bigwigs. Penguin, Black Mask, Warden Joseph... Gillian Loeb. Um, they've all got seedy little secrets and years of corruption for him to pull from, so he's planning to release it all come dawn. Awesome. Yeah, right? There's going to be arrests, carnage in the streets. People will know that, like, the commissioner was corrupt and, like, Warden Joseph's corrupt. Isn't Sick. Right? I don't know who this is, but yeah. fair play. I'm on board. So Batman is like, you're using the data you've stolen to blackmail people, Enigma. It's wrong. I would simply ignore the side quest. Also, he's not blackmailing them because he's just going to release it anyways. I he? will say, um... So I, I'm very much all of the blackmail you look, because you get to see all the blackmail, and I'm not going through all the blackmail. It's exactly what we can imagine. They're accepting checks and cash and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The only thing which is like not technically a good thing to release to the general public is uh, we learn that Jim Gordon is having an affair. Oh. This is this is a oh, thing shit. that ha this is a thing that happens in the comic. So Enigma is going to blackmail Jim Gordon. So that's like the one reason to do this is to like not have Jim Gordon be blackmailed. I'm by sorry, Enigma. I'm sorry, Jim. We're not friends yet. Yes. I am letting decades of corruption be brought to the public attention uh, over some cop that I don't know who's been fooling around. But he does know him because he saved him when his parents lived in the alley. <laughs> Well, we, do, we do learn that Enigma... You needed to brush up on that origin. We do learn that Enigma's been told to do this by Black Mask, so he's working for the baddie. So? Right? So we probably should stop him, I guess. Uh, no, 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 it seems oh, like okay. the end goal here. I'll just say, and mirror what you said, it wouldn't be my focus for the night if I was Batman. 
I'd be doing the other stuff. So, uh, yeah, so Batman's like, stop black mailing people is bad. And he's like, so, it gets the job done, and it's certainly kinder than the beatings you're so fond of doing. You're he's cheating. You're wrong. Mm. And, and so he's like, you're cheating, aren't you, trying to solve my puzzles? Who's who's helping you to outsmart me? And Batman's like, Chase no, and one's Neil. Me. no one's helping me, Enigma. Did you ever consider you're not as clever as you think? Sorry, you say Chase and Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Chase and Neil are helping masters. me. <laughs> Go back and listen to the Arkham Asylum. We smashed those apart from the first one, which took us about five minutes. Yeah, you did in the end. Yeah, it got a bit embarrassing for me, to be honest, towards the end of that. So uh, Batman's like, no one's helping me, Enigma. Did you ever consider you're not as clever as you think? And Enigma cackles at that. And he goes, ha, 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 says the man who seems to have mistaken Christmas Eve for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, there Enigma. you go, Batman. You need to be, this is how you need to be snapping back. Okay. Enigma's got some burns. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually we take down the relays. Like Firefly. Like Firefly, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, eventually we take down the relays, fix the radio towers. Enigma is raging and he's like, it seems you're quite the riddle. We will meet again. And when we track down his headquarters, we find that he's left a calling card and a sign of things to come. A green light-up trophy in the shape of a question mark, which means... <gasps> That's so enigmatic. Enigma was the Riddler all along. No, we did doesn't say that anywhere. I think what we're to take, <laughs> what we're to take from this is maybe the, the Riddler was inspired by whoever this is. Because mm. we never get... It seems like I we never agree. get... No, you're right. My bad. Uh, so and frustrating. I, Who was it? And I think that Enigma actually took this trophy from the Riddler. He went, this looks quite nice. Um, and it was, in fact, it was from when Enigma won the Riddler's contest. Mm. Damn it. Chase, I'm sorry to spoil this. I've played Knight, the last one in this series. Mm. I know that, that we never see this person again. So the identity never gets revealed. We never find out who Enigma Shit. was. Shit. Yeah. He showed up. He rizzed us. He left. <laughs> Damn. Uh, part two. Uh, I ain't done nothing you've not done. Um, so... The first step in our hunt for Black Mask is speaking to the Penguin. He's the number one arms dealer in Gotham. The drone we found belongs to him, so Bats figures out he might know more about what Sionis plans to do next. I do hope you'll keep a low profile tonight, sir, Alfred says. Trust me, I'll take out those assassins before they even know I'm there. Well, it's not just that. If some curious child looks out to see who's pattering across their rooftops, they'll expect Santa Claus, not some <laughs> black-clad bat creature. And he goes, don't worry, I've trained with Santa. I I can do the cover. No, Batman <laughs> takes a beat and then he just goes, I don't patter and hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I patter, son. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Why? Where are the shit puns coming from? <laughs> Got the fucking punler and his sidekick here. Like, right. so uh, we find. So, so yes. While he's while he's hunting for Penguin, he finds one of his men. This guy, Loose Lips. So he is one of Penguin's top lieutenants. <laughs> I, I'm pretty Not sure. an ideal name for your top lieutenant, is it? <laughs> I'm also pretty sure that you'll find that actually that Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing uh, a Santa hat. Uh, is it orchestra or something? Not an ideal name. Not an ideal name. So, uh, so uh, yeah, appreciate the application. What uh, what name should I put down? Uh, just call me LP. No need. No need. Nothing suspicious here. Yeah. Oh, this is our good buddy, Loose Lips. Give him the file, you can trust him. So I am going to tell you right now that this scene is incredibly fast. As in, I think in the time it will take for me to read through this, it will be like the scene happens before I'm done describing the scene to you, right? So, Batman swoops down, picks Loose Lips up by her throat and starts to choke him. And he goes, where's Penguin? And Loose Lips is too busy choking to eke out an answer. He can't say a word. And he's like, where is he? And then Loose Lips oh, passes we're out. In, we're, in, we're in the Nolan Batmans. <laughs> yeah. What a When he comes to, I'm not done. When he comes to, Loose Lips is hanging upside down over a gigantic Christmas tree in Jezebel Plaza. And Batman's like, time to talk. Where's the Penguin? And Loose Lips is like, let me go. And then Batman drops him just to catch him with his grapple. Loose Lips swings and smashes his head into the face of a massive clock tower. Dazed and confused, he says he'll give up Penguin's location, but fishing his phone out of his pocket, Batman then uses it to find out that Penguin is in fact at the Gotham Dockyard. So Batman's like, too late, I already have what I need. And uh, he drops Loose Lips from the roof, no grapple this time, and he just lets him free fall right into this massive Christmas tree. That is just, <laughs> what if he just But Batman doesn't kill people. Batman doesn't kill. Wow. <laughs> Wow. But if you happen to get impaled by the tree, you know, not yeah. his, it was gravity that did that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, so anyway, Penguin. 
Penguin is on board his ship, The Final Offer, which is technically in international waters, so he can do illegal arms <laughs> deals there without getting arrested. I think... Please explain why there's international waters in the middle of Gotham's Bay. I don't know. That's the ga explanation the game gives me. I don't know if it would pass in a court of law, but, you know, tonight... Penguin is holding a fighting tournament on board the final offer. Batman drops into the gladiator arena, surrounded by Penguin's men, and cracks his knuckles, eagerly looking for a fight. Luckily, or unluckily, Lester Buczynski, aka the Electrocutioner, is fighting in this arena. Oh no. Don't ask me why he's here rather than out hunting for Batman, but conveniently this means we can face off against this is, Assassin this has too. It worked out very well for this guy who <laughs> decided to slack off to go and hang out here. Yeah. Well, I don't know, he looks like a pretty tough fight either way. Yeah. He's great. So um he, he appears and he's like, Ugh. You just saved me a lot of trouble coming here, Batman. And he's wearing shock gloves, so he punches you and he electrocutes you at the same time. I'm gonna kill you, and then I'm gonna jumpstart your heart, and then I'm gonna kill you again. He throws himself through the air, fists in the air, and Batman takes him out with one swift kick to the, kick to the jaw. This is not even a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those fucking thighs. Oh, Batman is thick in this oh game. Two my Cs. God. Yeah, he's huge. He's dummy thick. I love his suit in this game. It is an yeah, awesome cool. suit. He looks brilliant. Um, so yeah, so Batman takes him out with one swift kick to the jaw, and like a health bar comes up and everything, and then it's like the first move, you just take him out. <laughs> um, so Assassin 2 down, great. Bats moves further into the ship looking for Penguin, but he doesn't need to go far. Penguin is interrogating Alberto Falcone, the son of mob boss Carmine Falcone. Does Carmine show up in any of his games? He does not, no. Which is a bit of a shame, but he never shows up. Classic, Gotham is locked in a gang war tonight. The old guard, mafiosos like the Falcones, are waging war on up-and-coming freaks like Penguin. And Penguin has gotten personal. It's heavily implied that there are, like, rules of war in Gotham prior to tonight. As in, you don't go after family, you don't do this, you don't do that, and, and Penguin is breaking those rules, Black Mask is breaking those rules. The, all bets are off tonight. Killing the commissioner? No one would- that's the biggest murdering Gotham's ever seen since the Waynes were killed. It's insane that this has happened. People are like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah apocalypse has come. Now, young Falcone, Penguin says, picking up a cattle prod. Cockney. Cockney. Sorry. I can't, I can't, I can't. You did it in the last one. I did, but now I've forgotten how to do it. Cockney, oh, East, East End, hello. What's that, Batman? Come on, Batman. I'm from the East End. Yeah, there you go, Batman, there you go. Now, young Falcone, there Penguin he says. Is <laughs> picking up a cattle prod. What are you going to tell your father? That, that, that we're getting out of the weapons business? I promise, I promise I'll make him do it. I see your lips flapping, Bertie, but they ain't making the sound I want to hear. Penguin gives a wicked grin, and he starts jabbing Falcone with a prod, laughing as he does it. And then, Batman makes his move. He crashes into the room, wipes out Penguin's men, and heads for Penguin. As he does this, Penguin is cowering at the side of the room, yelling, Kick his ass, you numpty prat! Hit him in the face, you wankers! And all that shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Batman picks up Penguin and throws him into a mirror. As Penguin catches his breath, he's like, I seen your act! I ain't done nothing you not done! Batman smashes him in the face, a whirlwind of rage. Black Mask put a bounty on my head. Where is he? How should I know? You're not a popular bloke in this town. Batman hits him again, and again, and again. Wait, wait. Lacey Towers. Black Mask's safe house. There was a murder. Seems like he's got problems of his own tonight. Someone broke in there and... But Penguin doesn't get to finish that sentence. A grapple wraps around Batman's ankle and whoosh. He's blown out of the door into the main foyer outside. It's Alfred, with the Christmas dinner. <laughs> Sir, you need to come back and eat. For the last time. This has been in the microwave twice, sir. I won't do it again. I won't stand by and watch another Christmas dinner get buried. That was a stellar Michael Caine, Alfred. <laughs> yeah. So a swift boot kicks Batman in the side of the head, but even though he's dazed and confused, he's able to get up to his feet so he can face assassin number three, Slade Wilson Deathstroke. This is very, happening very... How quickly. very convenient they're all showing up for him. Yeah. Well, they, he's tracking him, presumably. Deathstroke has been tracking him all night, he says. Um, so Slade holds out a sword at Batman and repositions his feet, and he goes, Looks like the game is over before it's begun. And he cracks his neck. I'm not playing games, Slade. Batman hushes. Where's Black Mask? <laughs> you know um, where he is. Yeah. You so, already told that. Yeah, yeah, you just found out. <laughs> yeah, just at Lacey Towers. So, he, he has just been kicked in the head, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's got a concussion. Uh, Deathstroke ignores him, and he's like, hmm, a bat. I wonder why. Did you choose a bat? Cue boss fight. 
So this lower dump will not do this justice because he's not on screen for very long. But this fight with Deathstroke is the second best boss in the whole series, I would argue. It is proper martial arts toe-to-toe -to -toe, where you can play around with the rhythm of the fight. But Pow Bang Whack eventually bats beats him. Guy. The thing about Deathstroke is like he learns and he learns and he's always evolving. So this fight is going to be as hard in 10 years as it was tonight. But every time Batman will probably just beat him by the skin of his teeth. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, it's over, Slade, Batman says. He disarms Deathstroke with his sword and kicks him back. What are you? Slade asks. Not scared, just genuinely curious. Batman throws Deathstroke's sword, it embeds in the wall next to his face, and with a roundhouse kick, roundhouse kick Batman knocks him into the dust. I'm Batman. <laughs> yes, good. Yeah. So we have our next stop, Black Mask's safe house at Lacey Towers. But first, side quest time. Anarchy is not one of our assassins. He's got his own game to play tonight. He gets our attention when he broadcasts himself to the people of Gotham, classic villain stuff. He's wearing an anonymous mask, like a uh, sort of like a, well, it's not a Guy Fox mask, but you know those white masks? Yeah. Um, and a big puffy jacket. He's not a metahuman. He doesn't have any powers or anything. He's just an anarchist. So are they called metahumans in DC? They are metahumans, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's what they're known as. Anyone with actual abilities or powers. So uh, yeah, and he shows up and he goes, Hello, Batman. I was hoping to get a minute of your time. See, I've got a story to tell you about crime and violence, greed and vengeance, but it's also a story of change. Anarchy's deal is that he loves Batman, but hates the rich corporate elites. So he's planted- Well, then I think he's gonna hate Batman. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know that Batman's Bruce Wayne though, remember? He doesn't have me to guide him through the story and to point out that, that very- Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you remember, remember, you had to find that out. Yeah, like, I did, it's true. And you keep forgetting, so after... it, it wasn't until, until I saw the action figures. <laughs> with both of their impeccably chiseled jawlines yeah. so he's planted Always three bombs that's that's all anarchy's deal is he's planted some bombs um where gotham gotham's corruption is at its strongest so banks police stations stuff like that i am offering you a choice anarchy says detonate the bombs or stop them your actions will determine what i do with you so of course we act to deactivate the bombs because innocent people could get hurt and once we deactivate the bombs anarchy holds up in the gotham courthouse the same courthouse where Two-Face kept Catwoman hostage in Arkham City, which is quite fun. Batman, you chose poorly, but I'd like to propose an alliance. Let's work together. But Batman is like, I don't work with criminals. Turn yourself in. I will if you will, Anarchy says. But you don't consider yourself a criminal, do you? This just feels like he's some high schooler in a mask and a hood. No. The gadgets, the tools, the suit. You're just another rich kid atoning for his fiscal sins, aren't you? Well, shame. And then we fight. Uh, Batman defeats him very easily. He goes in for another strike to really dish out justice and then stops himself. You're just a kid, he growls. And he ties Anarchy up instead. Oh, right. Yeah. Anarchy is maybe like 17 tops. Well, by the time I was 17, my parents have been dead. I was a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I was a ninja. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, you're just a kid. And Anarchy's like, so what does that matter? I wanted to make a difference. I thought you'd feel the same. I do, but not like this. A lot of innocent people could have died tonight because of you. Innocent? They watched as Gotham went to hell and did nothing. You see, it's not Roman Sionis or Cobblepot's fault things are so bad. They're just a reflection of our apathy, our greed, our fear. And what becomes of a society that gives up? It rots. Yeah. Society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was going to try and blow people up for being apathetic. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's uh, you know, maybe the method wasn't there yet, yeah. but, you know... Um, you keep cleaning up after everyone, Batman, and no one's going to learn to take care of themselves. The ones that don't hate you, they'll start to rely on you. And then what? If something happens to you, if you get old or bored or die, then what? Or do you not consider the world that revolves around you? Whatever pleases the bat, that it, you're not a hero. And Batman leaves him for the cops. So, part three, Lacey Towers. Alfred calls us up and is like, Master Bruce, listen, the police are at Lacey Towers now. They're saying the black mask is the victim. So Bats heads over to Lacey Towers and what he finds is disturbing. Tiffany Ambrose, Roman Sionis' girlfriend, has been tied to a chandelier dangling from his ceiling. Ah. She's riddled with bullet holes. Yeah. Batman looks at her and despite the brutality of her death, he mutters to himself that she was no angel. Oh Jesus, yeah. Batman, come on mate, time and place. Yeah, a fight happens. She's looking like a lovely Christmas tree topper though. <laughs> <laughs> So she's got into wings. We learned that a fight happened here. A malt of cocktails were thrown. The way blood has been spilled, she'll stab wounds. Somebody broke in here, forced Black Mask to kill his own girlfriend, and seems to have kidnapped him. Batman finds Tiffany's phone discarded to the site. The police missed it. And it turns out 
that she was sending text messages to Roman Sionis about someone called the Joker. Oh. Daddy? <laughs> yeah, sure. Strong Harley Quinn early energy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Quinn? So Batman does not recognize this name at all. And he's so early in his career that the Bat computer doesn't even have immediate access to like the crime database or anything. So he's gonna need to hack in manually and he's gonna need to break into the GCPD. A few things happen while we're at the GCPD. The first is that we learn that the police force is as corrupt as they come. Commissioner Loeb was corrupt, so it stands to reason that the poison drips from the head. Um, In fact, a lot of the cops are on Black Mask's payroll. So Batman beats the shit out of a bunch of them. Hooray. Uh, Alfred calls him up and is like, Must you be so brutal, sir? These are city employees. And Batman's like, They're as corrupt as they come and they're in my way. So were the Nazis, Alfred. (laughs) (laughs) You should know you fought some of them probably in your origin. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Jim Gordon's in here trying to piece together the events of the night. He knows about the assassins after interrogating Killer Croc. And he tells his men that the goal is to arrest Batman before the assassins get to him. For his protection and their own. And later in the station, we find Gordon talking to his daughter, Barbara Gordon. Oh my god, we know her. So she's just a normie at this point. She hasn't donned the cowl as Batgirl. She hasn't been shot and paralyzed by the Joker. She hasn't transitioned into Oracle. Jim is arguing with Barbara about Batman. And Jim's like, he's the worst kind of criminal. The kind who thinks their actions are justified. Who act completely outside of the system. Out of curiosity. Yes. Um... Does he know that she was Batgirl? No, he does not know. He, he. What is his understanding as to how she got paralyzed then? Shot by the Joker. Shot by the Joker to get to him. Okay. That is how it goes down in the killing joke. The, the, the whole thing about the killing joke is when, when Joker shoots Barbara Gordon, he doesn't even know that Barbara Gordon works for Batman. He shoots Barbara to fuck with the commission. Well, well to, to make a, to ultimately, right. no, to ultimately make a point to Batman about breaking a man, but like... Uh, it's yeah, but yeah it's he doesn't best, know the yeah. he doesn't know the connection between Batman and Barbara. Yeah. yeah. The whole point is like anybody can go mad after one bad day. That's the point he's trying to prove by using Jim Gordon. And tiny spoilers for probably the most famous Batman story ever. Jim doesn't break. That's the oh, Joker yeah. is like, why aren't you breaking? Um he gets close, but he doesn't break. So he's like, Oh, he's acting completely outside the system, he's a vigilante, and we gotta stop him. And Barbara's like, The system is broken, Dad. And eventually Batman comes face to face with her when she's alone. <laughs> She's hanging out in the comm center of the police station. Mysteriously, she seems to be trying to hack into it herself. When she sees Batman, she jumps to her Nerd. No. Don't do that. Leave her alone. Nerd. No, stop being nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very protective of Barbara Gordon. I love Batgirl to my core. Such a give the Gail Simone run so good. So he, Batman walks in and she jumps to her feet and is all startled. And he's like, easy. I need access to the National Criminal Database. And she's like, oh, it's... Well, it's, it's right there. Batman starts to tinker with it, and there's an awkward silence as he realizes that Barbara's watching him with curiosity. Um, and so there's a beat, and then to try and like fill the awkward silence, Batman goes, you uh, you spend a lot of time in here? <laughs> like computers? <laughs> Pretty much, you yeah. Nerd. yeah. So Barbara ignores the question, and she goes, cool poem box. He's got like a little gadget that he's using. And she looks, uh, looks, at, she looks at Batman, and she goes, you're bypassing the network security, but You're going to need to physically bridge the internet to the external telecom wires if you want to uplink remotely. And Batman is quietly impressed, and he looks at her, and a small smile glances across his face, and he goes, This kind of knowledge could get a young girl like you into trouble. And he goes to leave, and she's like, Into trouble. Or, you know, just employed. But yeah, yeah, full-time employed. Trouble trouble is definitely the first place. Salary, benefits, pension, just saying. So he goes to leave, and then Barbara stops him. And she's like, Wait, 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 I need to ask, why do you do what you do? And he looks past her and his eyes glaze. <laughs> oh, God. And he just goes, ben. I I made a promise. To never get therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly a smoke grenade bursts into the room. The cops know we're here. Barbara's like, go, get out of here. And runs out of the front entrance to where armed police are leveling their guns on the door. She's like, you hear a voice go, you idiots, it's me. What are you thinking? The cops are like, oh, geez, sorry, Miss Gordon, our bad. And Batman heads to the roof to escape. For some reason, he does this in the most conspicuous way possible. He just gets in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing him with the music. And da, 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 da. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and of course, you know, he opens up the elevator towards the, the very top floor. And when the door opens, he practically bowls Jim Gordon over, who's absolutely standing about. The guy's always smoking on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> So Jim immediately raises his gun at Batman. Batman slaps it out of his hand and grapples him to his knees. 
Um, and he's like, I don't want to hurt you, but you need to stay out of my way. I'm on your side. He lets Jim go, and he takes a step back so they can both kind of like take a deep breath. And Jim laughs. He goes, my side? My side works within the law. My side doesn't leave suspects with broken bones and missing teeth. We've earned Gotham's respect. I don't know about that, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they pretty famously do that. Yeah. Well, Batman looks at him and goes, if that were true, I wouldn't be here. Um, cops rush upstairs hearing the commotion. Batman drops a smoke pellet. Where is he? I want to break his teeth and bones. <laughs> Guys, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> I got to cover it up. <laughs> so, yeah, and then Batman bursts off into the night, escapes. Good stuff. Um, side quest time. Super short, this one. Uh, so, Barbara Gordon calls us up on the comms sometime later. And she goes, hello. Are you uh, hiring? Pretty much. She's I like, work with you? Batman, it's Barbara Gordon. Sorry for uh, hacking into your comms, but I need a favor. Some evidence crates have gone missing. Army grade stuff, and no one here's doing anything about it. So Batman agrees to help. She pings the locations of the crates to us. We fly around, destroy them. It basically canonizes the first time Bats and Babs work together. Okay. Clearly, he inspires her, and he's reluctantly touched. Uh, we learned that the crates are related to Penguin. Gotham's police force are just the worst. They're not he helping. The SWAT team are corrupt. They're actually selling the weapons. It's all shit. Um, but it's clear that in the end, um, Jim believes, Jim Gordon, her dad, believes that the police are the good guys. He just doesn't understand how widespread the rot is. So he's naive. Once we find the last crate, Bar Barbara's like, Woo, yeah, we make a pretty good team. So if you'd ever like, I don't know, want to partner up again, I'm here. Anyway, I'll let you get back to kicking ass and keeping us safe. Oh, this title's boring. What is it? I've just called it Part 4, Gotham Merchant Bank. Bit of a is that a double meaning or something? No. I, 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 I bet there's something else you're leading us on. Using the National Crime Database, there is curiously not much more information on this Joker character, whoever this is. But thankfully, Batman has a new lead. Black Mask is all tied up with Gotham Merchant Bank, and it seems like the Joker wants to use him to break into the vault. So let's go, let's find out what's going on. We burst into the vault, and the scene is strange. Black Mask is fine. He's walking around, waving a gun in the air, ordering his men to rob the place. Think you can just waltz into my bank, huh? He says, taking Batman in. His men point assault rifles at us. Roman, I'm here for the Joker, Bat says. Joker? Siona squints through his mask. Why aren't you here for him? Dunno, he's, he's wanting to find out more about the Joker, and so Siona's like, Joker, never heard of him. He walks over to where the bank manager is standing, held hostage by one of his men. How about you, doll? Know the Joker? And the manager tries to answer, but she can't. Instead, she's howling with laughter. Tears are It's really creepy. I've eyes. seen this. I've seen this cutscene before. It's horrible. Her, her, the corners of her mouth are being like pulled up without her, uh, like without her consent. It's very weird. Cool. And that's when one of his men shoves forward a man with a bag on his head. And you, sir, Black Mask says. The name Joker ring a bell. He rips the bag from his head. And we see Roman Sionis battered, bruised, and angry. You son of a bitch, he spits. You think you could steal from me and get away with it? You're a dead man, you hear me? Dead. Black Mask vibrates where he's standing. He tries to still his quaking muscles. He takes a deep breath and smacks Roman across the face with his gun over and over again. Can't you just play along? <laughs> He howls with laughter. The bank manager howls with laughter. Black Mask kicks Roman in the gut, the back, the face. Blood splats onto the concrete of the floor. He signals to his friend, and they load Roman up in the back of an ambulance's crash with a vault wall. And as they do, Black Mask takes off his mask, and as he turns, we see the clown prince of crime, the Joker. I'm really impressed by that makeup not getting ruined inside the mask. It's not makeup. Apart from the lipstick. Oh, is it not? It's no, not we makeup. see in the previous game, it's the, it's the vat of acid that turned his skin white and his hair green. First big twist of the game, and we're talking about his makeup. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Is it a twist? Yes. That the Joker is in a Batman game? That the Joker has been Black Mask this whole game? Oh, is, is that what we're meant to assume? It's been you this whole time, Batman rumbles. Oh, I'm okay, I, I thought that it was just this scene. You hired the assassins. You've been running Sionis operation. Well, Joker cackles in Troy Baker's voice. Technically, it's my operation now. Isn't that right, boys? The henchmen all swap their masks over <laughs> to clown masks. Now, remember, I've got do the bags I've given you. You've got the guns. You've each got a uh, you've each got a stipend for the day. Twenty dollars. Get your lunch. Okay. Bring me receipts and the second. But remember, wait till I say the line. Okay. <laughs> 
legit. So back, back the, so it's all crazy. The bank manager's laughter reaches its crescendo as she turns, looks at the goon next to her, sees the mask that he's wearing, and then collapses to the floor, shaking. You've got me, Batman points to the manager. Let her go. Oh, Joker laughs. Life would be so simple if you were all, if you were all I wanted. No, you're just a teeny little distraction compared to what I've got up my sleeve. He raises his gun and he's fires not been at Batman. Up by Batman yet, so he's not yet. He's not in love with him yet. Arkham Origins is not a Batman origin story. Is it a Joker origin story? Fucking Joker origin story, mate. Oh. So yeah, I mean technically it's a it's it's the origin of their relationship. So, yeah, he's like, let her go. And he's like, oh, you're not what I want. Oh, you're just a distraction compared to what I've got up my sleeve. He raises his gun, fires at Batman. Bang, 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 bang. Four bullets hit his bulletproof armor, but it's enough to knock Batman to his knees. Here, he laughs. Have a laugh on me. He shoves the manager over to Batman, jumps in the ambulance, and as it pulls out of the vault, he activates a detonator. Boom. Big old explosion. Batman throws himself at the manager to try and shield her from the blast. And everything goes dark. When he comes to, the manager is dead. Her face stretched out in a gruesome smile. A Batman calls Alfred to explain the whole situation. And Alfred is like, Sir, this Joker character sounds... <laughs> Alfred's turning a little bit Joker. Sir, this Joker character sounds dangerous. Maybe you should let the police handle him. But Batman does not listen. Sir, Joker's stopping you from eating your Christmas dinner. <laughs> Sir, Joker says he's going to blow up the whole city if you don't get back here now and eat this Christmas dinner. Legit. Um, so yeah, uh, but Batman does not listen to Alfred. So are we meant to take it that the Joker is a Christmas million? This is a Christmas game. And actually, the Joker's first appearance in the animated series was in a Christmas episode. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Uh, Arkham, it was Arkham Asylum. Joker gets on a rocket... Sh uh, rocket um, a rocket ship Christmas tree and blows himself out of the uh, roof of Arkham Asylum to escape <laughs> while singing at the top of his lungs Jingle Bells Batman Smells. That is how he is introduced uh, with Mark Hamill's voice. Iconic? So yeah. Really you need good. to watch the anime yeah, it was so, so good. good. Yeah, um, you get to meet Condiment King in that too. That's one of Condiment King's first ever appearances. You know Condiment King? Can't say I do. Shoots ketchup, mustard, and mayo. <laughs> <laughs> He's got guns that shoot ketchup, mustard, and mayo. It's his old gimmick. <laughs> Uh, he often doesn't last long when Batman shows up. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes he makes Batman slip. Um, <laughs> so this is the oh no, I'm allergic to dairy, not the mayo. <laughs> so yeah, Batman doesn't listen. He tracks Joker's signal across the city and heads off to the Siona Steel Mill. The place where one day, 10 years in the future, Joker would eventually hunker down in Arkham City. And I think I made the note of my critique. I think it's quite fun that in Origins, Joker's whole shtick is that he's stolen Black Mask's operation. And in Arkham City, he steals Black Mask's headquarters in Arkham City. <laughs> like, it's just what was fun. his beef? Uh, no, yeah, he just really hated the guy. Yeah. But yeah, but first, a side quest. And this is a really fun one. Three thugs wearing white rabbit masks accost Batman in an alleyway. They dance the robot as they sing, You were very cordially, cordially, cordially. <laughs> you were very cordially invited to a party. And it'll be a grand affair, grand affair, oh grand affair. And it'll be a grand affair hosted by the Hatter. So yeah, uh, suddenly, <laughs> blue, suddenly blue sparks shoot off the masks. The men are electrocuted and they collapse. Oh. Um, Mad Hatter hacks our comms and says hello in our ear. And he goes, greetings and salutations, Batman. I am Jervis Tetch, inventor, part-time haberdasher. You must be wondering why I sought you out. Well, I have an employment opportunity I'd like to discuss with you. In the background, we hear a young woman screaming for help. The signal dies, and Batman tracks it to a hat shop across town. But, oh, just a quick side note. Batman needs to get more in this game than any other, it seems. He needs to get some, like, Norton antivirus on this headset, Com. <laughs> you know, this is ridiculous. So, you came! Hatter does a little dance and applauds when we arrive. And he goes, oh, very good. The fun can be glad. And Batman grabs him by the throat and... Immediately <laughs> chokes him out again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's the girl? Where's the girl? Batman, Batman, legit. He pins him against the clock, squeezes tire and tire and goes, where's the girl? And the Hatter's like, take talk, but we'll watch the clock. And the room starts and to the spin. the party don't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so the room starts to spin and Batman finds himself in Wonderland. I'm sorry, fucking what? <laughs> yeah, excuse me. This is where I first met Alice, you know. <laughs> what grand adventures we had. This is why I've brought you here, Batman. The forces of the Queen are conspiring against her, and I need your help. Who better to protect Alice than the Batman himself? 
So it's a whole section reminiscent of the Scarecrow Nightmare levels. Who back better to protect her than this hero who nobody knew of before tonight? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just like the Scarecrow Nightmare levels. Batman needs to fight, leap, gadget his way through a nightmare realm under Hatter's control. Eventually, Batman breaks free of the illusion and finds the Mad Hatter holding Alice hostage. Help me! A woman cries. I was about to say, she's much older than I was expecting her to be. She's voiced by Laura Bailey. What? She has four lines in the entire Yeah, you you wouldn't get her doing this now. She's way too famous. So, yeah, just just a fun kind of little anecdote there. Laura Bailey here, playing Alice. Um, And she goes, help help me! And Hatter holds a knife to her throat. She's dressed in an Alice costume. He can, he will, he just has to leave. He can, he will, he just has to leave. He can, he will. Really now, you're becoming my pet peeve. Batman tosses a batarang, it careens through the air and knocks the knife out of Hatter's hand. Just like it's the same reverse batarang shit that you didn't yeah. say. Batman leaps forwards, clocks him in the head, knocks him out. End of side quest, Alice gets him. What was, what was the Hatter's plan here? Uh, he wanted Batman to work for him and become his bodyguard again. Oh. And protect Alice from the Queen. Right. We don't know who the Queen is. So was. what was this whole he has to leave thing? Like, just because well, he realised that Batman, uh, he, he couldn't right. control him, yeah, so he's like, okay, you leave. Right, yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's it. Part five. Chase, I want to know how you feel before we start part five about this big twist because some people really don't like it. The reveal that this has been an, it's another Joker game. We've had two and people were like, oh shit, Black Mask and Deathstroke. Oh, it's fully what I was expecting. You were we- expecting the Joker to be the big bad again? Yes. Hmm. Because they just killed him off and they went, oh shit, we killed off the big bad yeah. of Batman. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of committed to him not being in the next one. Let's just as much time as we can. Let's <laughs> ring. Basically, let's like, ring the Joker. Out I was, I was more surprised when you sh- showed the cover image and it, the Joker wasn't there, mm-hmm. and so I went. So when the Joker finally showed up, I'm like, oh yeah, that that's that pretty expected. People, some people did not like this. I, I think I really like this. I, I can understand why more le- legitimate Batman fans would not be happy yeah. wanting to see other villains. Yeah. Me as a very casual Batman fan is like, oh, I'm more Joker, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> totally fair, yeah. And I would also argue that this is like, to- he's top tier. He gets real fucking good in this. Um, so my favorite Joker scene, second favorite Joker scene in the entire franchise happens in this game. Um, and it's coming up. Part five. I've just called it the Siona Steel Mill. Sorry, these... I don't know why I just gave up naming them. Oh, damn. Were you... Were you, were you, you all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you better steal yourself for what's coming. Apparently. No. Um, um, stop milling around. Sorry. And, and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was finding, I was finding my place. Yeah. They were both stellar. They were both stellar. Um, come on, I got nothing else. Part five. You're no hero. Oh, good enough. No, yeah, it's fine. It. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do. Do better. A parade of corpses lie between the entrance of the steel mill and the torture room where Roman Sionis is being kept. It's not the Joker's lethal laughing gas, though. None of these bodies have smiles on their faces. It looks like a different kind of poison. Upstairs, Bats finds Black Mask. He's too exhausted to fight back. We unhook him from the chains he's hanging from and he hits the deck quick fast. Where's the Joker? Batman barks. Oh god! Every scene opens this way. (laughs) Sionis is like, go to hell! And Batman's like, wrong answer! And he starts beating the shit out of Sionis. He kicks him in the stomach, fracturing bone. He he breaks his ribs. And then he goes, by my count, there are still nine more ribs I can break. You think that'll make me talk after what he put me through? Torture. Turning my man on me, stealing from me, murdering my woman? He's my kill, Bat, not yours. Another smack to the face. I can control your pacemaker remotely. Want to see what 250 beats per minute feels like? And he starts to Jesus. calibrate his gadget with it. Yeah, so Batman's doing his thing, beating up Sionis, and then whoosh, the poisonous assassin whoosh. Copperhead lunges in. She twists her legs around Batman's neck and throws him to the floor. Good name. I I'm, I don't remember Copperhead much from the comics. In the comics, Copperhead used to be a man. Right. Uh, they made Copperhead a woman for this, and Batman actually makes the, the comment when it all comes up at the start. I just can't cut it. Yeah. Uh, where he goes like, huh, I don't have like a woman under this name in my database. And Alfred's like, oh, maybe it's a new one. And that's it. Mm. Um, clearly just wanted to make it a woman. Okay. Uh, but poisonous this, assassin. The comics have turned her into a poisonous uh, lady. Um, Makes sense with yeah. the name. Used to be a bloke. Um, so Black Mask kind of gets to his gets to his feet as Copperhead and Batman start duking it out. And he's like, kill him and I'll pay you whatever you want. Copperhead whips around Batman and laughs at Sionis. And she's like, ha, an empty promise from a broken king. I know about the Joker. Couple of freaks, Sionis says. And with Batman distracted, he races out of the room, escaping the steel mill. Batman tries to fight Copperhead back, but she scratches him, a big gouge in the cheek. Her poison starts to seep in. 
I've killed you, she says. In a few minutes, your body will realize it. The world spins, Batman quickly scans droplets of her toxin on the floor and sends the scan to Alfred in the Batcave. He's like, oh no, I don't have my willpower yet. I can't yet outlive this. I've not yet cultivated that. Well, sir, I, I might be able to help you. It'll cost you one chicken dinner. <laughs> I'm going to put the antidote in the mince pudding. Now, now, now it's, it's in, in your carrots, sir. You've got to eat your veggies, so I've popped it in a carrot. And maybe if you're good, I'll give you a slice of pecan pie. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Alfred basically says, like, antidote on the way. Get to ground level so I can send in an airdrop. Uh, so we stumble through. <laughs> it's the airdrop. It's just Christmas dinner with a little note saying, finish this and I'll give you the antidote. <laughs> yeah, very good. Oh, God. Right. <laughs> so Batman tries to escape the steel mill. Um, Copperhead's shadow looms over us as we try to power through. She's watching from somewhere above. And then we see him. Alfred. What would your father say if he could see you now? Alfred says. His voice is ethereal and echoey, hallucinatory. Throwing away your family's hard-earned fortune on these frivolous nightly escapades. And for what? You're not this city's saviour. You're a Wayne, and a spoiled disappointment of a Wayne at that. Poof, he vanishes. He, uh, and Batman keeps going. So it's like kind of proto-fear toxin. Yeah, it's like early days fear toxin. It is also killing him. The poison's killing him. But like, it, it, he's, it's just in his dying moments, his brain's going nuts. Um, yeah, so we keep going. And as we do, we hear Commissioner Loeb's dying moments in the gas chamber. The various thugs that Batman has tortured tonight. Constant reminders of pain, loss, and failure. You're no hero, Loeb screams. A real hero would have saved me. In the, into the elevator we go, punching buttons desperately to get outside. And then the bank manager appears. Her neck twists, cracks, snaps. That massive jokerified smile stretches across her face. You let me die! How many more must perish before you realize that you're no savior? <laughs> We'd be better off without you. I'd still be alive without you. And then, Copperhead attacks. The drugs make us hallucinate that it's not just one copperhead, but three, four, five, twenty. A long night of copperheads that Batman's lost in. But in the end, he bests her. Her head hits the ground, she falls unconscious, and then crash, an airdrop from Alfred. Batman pops the antidote in his neck, shadows fall away, we're all good. We tie up Copperhead as she comes to. I know where the Joker is, she sings. He's called a meeting. All of the assassins will be there. When you set me free, I'll tell you where. So, off to our next stop, the Gotham City Royal Hotel. Oh, like, there's only like three of the assassins he hasn't beaten at this uh, one. Legit. And sorry, I should point out that uh, Batman doesn't let her go. Uh, she tells him information that he ties her up anyway. Uh, just want to yeah. point that out, just in case anyone was like, wait, Batman's about to let this woman go? No, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so off he goes. Alfred is like, you need to come back. You've just been through hell and you're in no state to fight the Joker. If you know where he is, just call the police and tell them where they are. And Batman ignores him. He enters the hotel and looks into the security monitors where he sees the Joker's meeting. Joker paces anxiously around the room wearing his black mask outfit. Bane. Wait, why is he still on that? Isn't the jig up by now? Well, not everybody knows yet. So Bane, Firefly and Electrocutioner are there in person. Shiva and Deadshot have called him remotely on a Zoom call. <laughs> As you can see, Joker says in his black mask voice, Batman deaths are coming in far below projections. And you'll see he's got like cartoons of like graphs in the background. I feel like this immediately gives away it's not black mask. Electrocutioner is ignoring him, playing on his phone. Joker approaches. We are really going to have to turn this around. He takes his mask off and tosses it in Electrocutioner's lap. Time for everyone to meet the clown. And by we, I mean you. As the mask comes off, we see Bane's face twitch as he realizes he's been tricked and lied to. Just who the hell are you, Electrocutioner says. Me? I'm the guy with the money and the gun. So <laughs> when I hire you to kill the Batman, you shut the hell up and kill the Batman. Anything else to contribute? Electrocutioner shakes his head. Didn't think so. And just like that, Joker kicks Electrocutioner out of the window. He falls, 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 and with a hard, wet splat, dies right next to where Batman is standing. Oh. Yeah, and I will point out that Batman, uh, he, he takes the shot gloves off him. <laughs> oh my god. So now we have shot gloves. Checks through his pocket for his wallet. Mm. So back into the room to follow this scene. 
So, uh, yeah, Bane gets to his feet as Electrocutioner dies, and Firefly reaches for his gun. Joker pulls out a knife and pops some food into his mouth. Mmm! He's like, this fruitcake is delicious! Meeting adjourned! Get out there and get to work! Without a word, Firefly's jetpack bursts into life and he blasts off to the night sky, keen to be as far away from this lunatic as possible. He didn't say a single word this entire scene. Um, Bane remains. And Joker looks up over to him and he goes, Well, move it along, big boy! He's coming for you now. And when he gets here, I'm going to kill him. He stands, and I, I love this shot. He, we see for the briefest of seconds, the Joker's smile drop as he sees this towering statue of a man loom over him, smelling Bane's threat. So you wait, and he pushes Joker into his chair. Joker starts to laugh, and it simmers, and it bubbles, and finally blasts out of his mouth. He spins around the chair, and it's like, <laughs> wee! End of part five. Want a quick side quest? Yeah! So, this is a really quick one. Um... Earlier in the night, as Batman's flying about, he hears a baby crying in a pram. He goes to investigate and sees that there's nothing there, just a speaker with a recording of a baby. And then, wham, out of nowhere comes Lady Shiva, martial arts expert and master assassin. Oh, in a side quest. In a side quest. Yes, uh, yeah. Shiva's less interested in killing Batman and more interested in testing him. They know each other, they've met before. Um, so she was there when he trained, it's all good. Had he already adopted the Batman persona? I thought he didn't no, she'll know, she'll know who he is. She'll recognize the fighting style, and all that stuff, she figures it out. Um, so when Bruce left and returned to Gotham, Shiva went on her own way, and she actually ended up joining the League of Assassins. So she's actually working for Ra's al Ghul. She's here on orders from Rish. He's heard about this mysterious Batman and wants to see if he could be a worthy heir to the League of Assassins. Two tests, Batman, she says. Somewhere in New Gotham, an innocent man and a corrupt man are about to die. Find them, or save them. So Batman's like, he, he finds the innocent man, kicks some ninja ass, good stuff. But when he tracks down the corrupt man, he sees that Shiva has already killed him. Batman is like, God damn it, Shiva, there you go, kill him again. I won't kill him because I'm <laughs> Batman. And Shiva's like, nah, your little bitch, kill him's good, it's justice. Gotham stained, his time will come. Summon, summon, League of Assassins bullshit. We've heard it all a thousand <laughs> times. Batman and Shiva fight, we kick her ass. But before Bats can tie her up for the police, she drops a smoke bomb and disappears. And you think that she might come back one day, she doesn't. That's the end of the Shiva plot. So, uh -huh. great. Uh, anyway, back to Joker. And I've called this part Joker. Part six, Joker. <laughs> I'm going to call this part... <laughs> sure. Well, there we go. T yeah. Yeah. Write it out. Tee he he he. How many he's were there? Sorry. T he 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 he. he four. He. Oh, seven, seven. Six, six he's, one T. I'll right. do, I'll do right. three. I'm pretty content with three. Like T he he he. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it. We can always circle back to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Circle, yeah. Back, circle back. Fantastic. We can edit this bit. As Batman climbs the hotel, we pick up police chatter. Alfred has told the cops the Joker's at the hotel against Bruce's wishes. <laughs> uh, Joker sets up a few hostages for us to save, testing our strength and resolve. And a lot of this level is a big fat throwback to the days of Arkham Asylum. Um, so we find his court. Electrocutioner's corpse, steal his gloves, um, we get a cheeky combat upgrade, it's all good. And then we see that Joker has transformed half of the hotel to a massive funhouse, full of games for Batman to play. Aww. And yet none of the assassins noticed this on their way in? <laughs> I guess not, that's they a get, really they good get point. Top, they're like, yo, Black Mask, fuck was all that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the whole time, like, I don't know. How much is he spending on set design? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is a joke? So he's over the speakers while we're you know, saving the day and typical Arkham stuff. And he goes, do you want to know the awful truth? Yeah, I've only been in Gotham for a few days and I've already accomplished so much more than you in the, what has it been? Two years you've been doing this whole costume thing? <laughs> we hear a news chopper outside. Vicky Vale, Gotham's Aww. number one reporter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Jack Ryder's not in this. Well, he's uh, the only one with a helicopter. Uh, true. No, she's she's nicked it. It's fine. So Vicky Vale has arrived to film Batman's confrontation with Joker and Bing. With him caught on film, he's no longer an urban legend. After tonight, everybody will know that he exists. Every time Batman speaks, he sounds a little rawer, a little rougher, and a little more disturbed by what he's seeing. The Joker has sliced and diced his own men, strung them up from the rafters, redesigned an entire Gotham landmark just for the sake of showmanship. And Alfred calls him and he's like, Sir, are, are you alright? And Batman's like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, Alfred. It's just, I've dealt with psychopaths before, but this, 
You shouldn't have called Gordon. Oh, I'm feeling a bit hungry. <laughs> and then finally, at the top of the hotel, Batman meets Bane. No words are traded. Bane grabs Batman, smashes him over and over again into the floor, like he, he wrecks him. And finally, he launches him through the wall into the meeting room where Joker is waiting. And we get this beautiful shot. Nice of you to drop in, Joker giggles. He's mine, payaso! Bane roars at Joker and picks Batman up, ready to hurl him out of the window into the cold night air. Ah, 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 Joker sings. Remember, you gave your word! <laughs> we see on the table are blocks of detonators. One for various buildings, they're all labelled. Joker lightly taps the one rigged up for this hotel that they're in. The threat is clear. If Bane kills Batman now, Joker will blow them all sky high. Bane crunches his knuckles into Batman's head once and then spits on the floor in front of the Joker. You have one minute. Do they even have manners where he comes from? Joker asks Batman. You see, it's a tradition in my house to open one present on Christmas Eve. He looks at the detonators. Hmm, how about this one? He pushes the button and boom. A skyscraper across the way, it just, it just explodes. The whole building comes down. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree, he sings. Batman grabs him by the collar and hoists him into the air. How many lives did you just take? None, I think. That was just a little stocking stuff. A construction site blocking my view. Batman sees red. He smashes Joker into the table and pummels him over and over. With every blow, Joker is laughing and giggling. And then Bane interrupts. I've long waited for this moment. I've watched you, Batman. For two years I've watched. You are a worthy adversary, a warrior. With your death, I will find peace. This is some ballet-ass shit. Look at how graceful that pickup is. Well, well, are, you, are you kind of familiar with what this is referencing? This is a reference to a famous moment in the comics. So in the 90s, they did a story called Nightfall, mm. where Bane beat Batman. He broke his back and he finished him. Oh. Um, and this is this is a kind of moment. The the cover of that issue is a really famous shot from this from this run is Bane holding Batman up and then bringing him down over his knee. Yeah. And I know you've not seen the third Nolan movie, but that's a part of the plot in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Is oh, is it? Bane breaks his back. Yeah. It's, a, it's an iconic image. People generally know this. So Bane lifts Batman into the air over his head and then he throws him into the next room. Doesn't break his back, doesn't do the knee thing. Uh, it's just a little tease, a little, a little oh, that's fun. Um, so yeah, cute boss fight. In his raw form, this is a brilliant boss. Bane has his brute strength, but you might have noticed that he's not the humongous ball of muscle we fought in Arkham Asylum. He's not started abusing the chemical venom yet. That is about to change. Batman beats him back until eventually Bane drops his jacket. A concentrated dose of venom injects itself into his muscles. His eyes flash green, he pants like a wild animal, and we see him energized. There's a light version of the venom he'll eventually use. He's still a master strategist, he's still able to think clearly, but it sets him into a berserker rage. The two titans burst out of the window and onto a ledge outside of the building during a blizzard. The whole time, Bane is like, Yes! Yes! This is what I wanted! Fight me with all you have! Stop holding back! But the fight is interrupted when the police arrive. A chopper flies by. We hear the cops over a megaphone. Stand down! Repeat, stand down! Joker jumps onto the balcony and just starts shooting. He doesn't care who he hits. Batman, Bane, the cops. He's living his best life. And he's like, <laughs> now this is what I call a party! Suddenly, Bane's men come flying in on their own chopper. Is it bad if I say the Joker's really hot in this picture? Uh, not bad at all. He's, he's an attractive Joker in these games. He's really hot, yeah. So, Bane's men come in. They're firing rocket launchers at the police. Some of the police choppers go down. Uh, and Bane's like, oh, the rooftop's getting too hot. And then he looks at Batman and he goes, you got off easy. He leaps off the rooftop into one of the choppers. Um, Batman kind of like, as, as Bane's leaving, Batman smirks. He goes, looks like you just ran out of time. And uh, which is a lot like what Batman said to Vicky Vale right at the very beginning. He says it with the same intonation. Was there a was there a time element to the fight with Bane? Had they been talking about time or it's clocks more or like, something? No, like generally it's just like you ran out of time. It looks like you ran out of time. The cops are here now. Like that's the kind of the thing. Oh, so it's not a clever line. Really. It is a per it's a clever line in one sense for reasons that we'll go into later. It is purposeful here that he is referencing what he said to Vicky Vale earlier. Right, that's okay. important. So yes, Bane leaps off the rooftop into one of the choppers. Batman tosses a tracker onto his thigh. Bane doesn't know it. Um, and Joker's like, just where do you think you're going? And he opens fire on Bane now with his gun actually trying to hit him. Bane grabs a rocket launcher, whirls around, and blasts it at Joker. It whizzes right past the clown's face, hits the building behind him, 
and the Joker is blown forwards off the side of the building. Batman watches in slow motion as Joker topples to the ground like he's off the building and he's going to fall to his death. Mm. And without thinking, he leaps off the building to save him. Mm. The two tumble through the air. Surprise molds on Joker's face and eventually the two crash into the ground floor of the hotel. Two of Joker's men run in, level their guns at Batman and Joker gets to his feet. <laughs> Why? And then the laugh turns to a snarl. Why? Why would you do that? Newsflash, I'm the one who's trying to kill you. He puts a gun to Batman's head, pauses, and then shoots both of his men instead. Now, now, and, and Batman goes for him to try and knock him out. And he stops and points the gun again. He goes, now, now, now. Those were two very bad men. <laughs> the things they've done... You really don't want to know. They deserved death. Just like me. And he puts oh. the gun to his own head. Batman, like, it, without thinking, without blinking, like, Joker does this almost like... It is, I believe, fully in this moment, Joker it tries to shoot himself. I don't think he does this to fuck around. The way the scene plays this out, like, you hear him, like, cock it as he pulls it ready to go. Batman immediately just, like, knocks it out of his hand. And he knocks Joker to the ground just as the cops arrive. Don't move, freak! The cops yell, but just as they close in, Batman grapples out of the building, leaving them alone with the Joker. The police cuff Joker and start to take him to Blackgate Prison, and as they put him into a squad car, one of them is like, Where'd he go, huh? And Joker's like, Who? The Bat, your partner! My partner? Who else would jump off a building to save your sorry ass? You know, officer, Joker mutters, I was wondering the same thing myself. Hmm... I, I love a meat cute. Mm. And this, you know, there's been a few of them here. And... We cut to Blackgate Prison. Arkham Asylum hasn't opened yet. This is where all of the colorful crooks are taken. Joker lies strapped to a gurney. A doctor oh, enters. I wonder who that is. Blonde hair, red top, white coat. She sighs as she sees the Joker. She goes, ah, Cops in this city, always beating on the sick and defenseless. And always keeping me from my Christmas pudding. <laughs> oh, hey. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, very yeah. good. Uh, Joker turns his head, almost like he's just like in a bit of a daze. He's just alone with his thoughts. And he looks out and he goes, Tell me something, dear. Have you ever had a really bad day? Mm. And suddenly, we flash to playing as Joker. Oh! And we finally get some insight into his mind. So re one bad day killing joke, reference to that. It's like anyone could go mad with a one with if you just have one bad day. And remember, we don't know exactly what his one bad day looks like. We've got multiple choice options to pull from. Yeah. So we flash to playing as Joker and we finally get some insight to him. Uh, he's standing in a comedy club telling jokes. So conf confirmation there, definitely a comedian. There's nothing so cruel as memory. The pointy, bitey little thunderbolts, unwanted party crashes, screamers through your synapses. The club changes. The lights are gone. Weapons fly through the air at Joker as he bats them away. The smile is gone. Suddenly he's... scared. No, terrified. You can't even escape into madness. And then you meet someone. Someone who changes your life and you feel that you don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> Isn't it funny how one little encounter can cleave off pieces of your past? Deform your memories until you rethink your whole identity. Okay, the doctor says. I'm going to need specifics. How about we try some void association? That sounds delightful. Acceptance. Ah, my favorite stage. Time shifts and forms. We get the sense that perhaps an hour has passed. The Doctor is giggling, giving in to Joker's charms. We see some thugs push Joker forward. He's wearing a red cape and a helmet. It's the red hood I was telling you about. It does look very silly. I'm sure you're thinking that. This is how it looks in the comics. Yeah. It is as silly. Yeah. In fact, it's sillier in the comics. It's way It's taller. way bigger in the way comics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous in the comics. Okay, okay, the Doctor says. One more, and I need you to be serious about this one. Fate. You want to know something funny, Joker's voice says as we watch him march through an old chemical plant. I used to think of fate as evil, predetermined not by some higher power, but by the rules of human nature. But tonight, that's all changed. I feel like my whole life is built at this one moment. Flash. We see how Joker sees Batman. A monster, a fanged, winged, shadow-clad beast. 
Do you realize what a vile world we live in? How lonely it is to wade through all the wretch and filth on your own. Even in a crowd of other screwballs, you're so alone you can kick, claw, yell, scream at the top of your lungs and <laughs> no one cares. It's like you don't even exist. I feel... Sometimes I feel like I'm trapped on this path leading nowhere into just emptiness. But now... It does get kind of lonely, doesn't it? The doctor says softly. Joker stares into a whirling vortex. Chemicals slosh around, tossed by an unseen storm. The bat monster grabs him and throws him in. I feel adrift, floating, reborn. Oh, it's all very exciting, really. We see Joker crawling through an alleyway in the rain outside the chemical. Plant. Remind me, was it Batman who threw him in the vat? Yes. Okay. It pretty much every, not every story. Is it in this? Is in, that in some versions? It's like maybe. No, just I'm saying, is it, is it in this? That's just how he remembers it in a monologue, and, a, and the visuals are very clearly unreliable. You're right. You're right. The, the way the Joker sees it, Batman threw him in. It could just be that while Joker was running away from him, he tripped and fell. Batman was there. Yeah. Batman was there for this moment. Joker. The thing for this is that Joker just Batman created me. He created what I am. So we see Joker crawling through an alleyway in the rain outside the chemical plant. He looks in a puddle and Batman stares back. Can you tell me more about how this person makes you feel? It's like meeting someone I can actually relate to, which believe me, dear, I have never felt before. So may I ask, who is this person? The doctor asks. Someone very, very special, Joker says, but whose real name I, I don't even know. Flash, back to the patient room in Blackgate. The doctor blushes. Oh, God, no. Well, my name's Harleen. Harleen Quinzel. What a pretty name. Joker smiles. Where did that introduction come from? Did she, did she, because did she assume just... or did she hope that he was talking about her? Harleen thinks this entire love letter that Joker has just written to Batman effectively she thinks that he's oh, he's leading really to saying I have feelings for you. She's completely misread it. It just met. Yeah, so yeah, because he's like, um, she's like, who is this person? He goes, someone whose name I don't even know. She goes, well, well, my name's Harley, or Harleen, and he goes, what a pretty name. Do your friends call you Harley? And Harley goes, oh, I, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of friends. And Joker says, well, Harley, you've got one now. So if Joker's having a great time, Batman is having a shit one. As he flies back... <laughs> <laughs> Miserable picture you yeah. I've never he... seen someone look more raging while driving. As he flies back to the Batcave. <laughs> He's like, you're Dan traffic. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 he is. So, Merge! Merge! <laughs> <laughs> so he's, his mind is reeling as he's going back to the Batcave. Um, flashes of the Joker, of the moment he leaped, up, leaped off the rooftop, he hears Joker's words over and over again. Why? Why did you do that? It's clear he doesn't know the answer. And in his fugue state, the Batcave shifts and changes in front of him. It's no longer his place of safety. It all looks like Crime Alley, the place where his parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, died. Oh, is that what happened? Wait, yes. I thought they lived. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, that, no, that no, no, actually... we've been over this. That explains a lot, actually. Batman, okay, okay, okay. I don't have a, fl <laughs> where's the, I'm going to need to get a graph ready for next time because this is getting on my tits. <laughs> Ma Thomas, Martha Wayne, billionaires, died in Crime Alley, right? Bad time in oh. Crime Alley. Batman... Born from that because Batman is remember remember he shot them and no, it's the guilt no. it's the guilt that he's been no, feeling. Batman no, is, no 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 Commissioner Gordon shot them. No. Oh and he was there and he comforted Commissioner Gordon because he was right. sad about it. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Oh what? <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Pay attention. But he did the crime in Crime Alley because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called Crime Alley. Yeah. God damn. He, he he probably in his in his in his young mind he saw that say Crime Alley and he went. Oh, I need to do a crime here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and I think we're supposed to read that while young Bruce Wayne was running away, he knocked the Joker into a vat of acid. Is that what we're getting here? I would assume so. Yeah, okay, got you. That's my read. Cool. The Batcave is crime alley, but then Alfred snaps him out of his days. He's so starving, he's hallucinating. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> uh... Alfred, for anyone that doesn't know, Alfred's got a, a tray with a cloche over it. And is that what uh, it's called? Yeah. A cloche? Yeah, I know that from working in... Fancy restaurants. Wow. Well, yeah. so yeah, Alfred Strayer was just like, it might be a bit anticlimactic, 
But I hoped you might finally be ready to celebrate Christmas Eve, now that Joker's behind bars. It's only the eighth oh. time I've microwaved it tonight. I'll be honest, it's dry as shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Batman. I did try to steam it a little bit, but it, it didn't do much. Do you know, if you put a glass of water in the microwave with a slice of pizza, it really helps. It That's does. true, by the way. I did not know that. I've never tried that. Put a cup of water in, uh, in a microwavable cup, of course, to practice safe microwave use. In a, in a complete, with me. in a metal-only cup. <laughs> Start with the fork, leave the fork in there. Usually, usually, if you and see that's cookie facts with cheese. If, if, if you see sparks, that means that it's really adding flavor to the pizza. Please, please. I, th- I feel like I shouldn't have to do this, but it's the internet, so don't do that. Um, I really love this scene for what okay, it's worth. Okay. Uh, this yeah, is a really, really the scene, scene of us in the room not no. letting you continue. No, no, sorry, right, just I love this scene. So. Um, so he's like, oh, Christmas Eve time, you won the day, hooray. And Batman is like, Bane is still out there. And he's, he slaps himself awake for a second out of his days, and uh, there's a beat. And then he finally says what's been weighing on his mind. If you hadn't called the police, Bane would already be in custody. You know, Alfred sighs, I made a promise of my own all those years ago to your parents. But Bruce ignores him. He's switching through radio frequencies, typing into the Bat computer. He picks something up that sounds promising and immediately marches towards the Bat wing, the Bat shaped plane, ready to head back out. And Alfred starts to call after him and he goes, Master Bruce, stop. I, Master Bruce, Bruce. And he grabs Bruce's shoulder and he whirls around. And Batman snaps out and goes, what are you? And he goes, I will not in good conscience allow you to go. You are upmatched by these assassins and I'm what? You're not some hardened vigilante. You're a young man with a trust fund and too much anger. (laughs) Go off. Now sit down and eat your fucking dinner. (laughs) Beautiful. There's a beat after he says that he realizes what he's just said. And then he goes, you are in over your head and... And I don't want this to be your end. And a silence hangs between them. And finally Bruce breaks it by saying, Alfred, who do you see when you look at me? The boy whose shoes you used to tie every morning? The teenager who drove to his first date? While you're here every night, I am out there. The only thing between the innocent and the predatory. You may be, but no, not may be, I am. When the mugger or the thief stops to think twice, that is fear. That is what I am. That is why they hired assassins. Because I am the reason the criminals breathe easier when the sun rises. So no, Alfred, I am not in over my head. Tonight will not be my end. But it will be theirs. And without another word, Bats climbs into the Batwing and shoots off back to Gotham. Damn. Fucking love that scene. I love Alfred just get finally saying what he's been thinking. I love Bruce's like legitimately solid reply. It's fucking Alfred great. just go, turns and tosses the dinner in the trash. Yeah, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. Fuck you. Yeah. Legit. This is like, there's not much going on now between the two of them. Um, that is that is a fracture moment for the two of them. I know what you're wondering though, um, because you know, all, all of this has been happening, all this good storytelling, but like what's Deadshot up to? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> what is he doing? Probably missing a few targets. Well, just like Arkham City, it's short and sweet side quest. Deadshot shoots down a police chopper, lures B- Go- Batman to the Gotham Merchant Bank. Uh, he's like, hello, Batman. I'm afraid playtime's over. Face me so I can put a bullet in you and collect my bounty. But Batman decks him, ties him up. And when he does, Deadshot's like, all right, get it over with. Just finish me quickly, will you? And when Batman just marches off into the night, he cannot get over his shock. And he's like, where are you going? What's happening? Yeah. Kill me! Yeah. And that's it. That's all that happens there. That's us, everyone except Firefly, right? Uh, yeah, part seven, Firefly. Okay, <laughs> cool. Garfield. <laughs> yes, good old Garfield. So there's a lot of little itty bitty things that happen now. So I'm just going to kind of rattle through them without any dramatic flair, right? Sure. Number one, Batman learns that the venom compound that Bane uses has damaging side effects, specifically to the brain's memory centers. He's regulating his use, but if he goes OTT with it, he could lose his mind and get amnesia, okay. right? Number two, we track Bane's signal to an underground base full of weapons, gear, explosives, the whole shebang. We pick up that Bane has a dedicated following of mercenaries at his beck and call. They are almost cultishly devoted to him. Number three is the big one. We see that Bane has been tracking Batman for two years and has documented his investigation. Why? And scariest of all, he has deduced that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Shit. He's figured that out. He's, he figured it out because on the rooftop, Batman turned to Bane and said, you just ran out of time. 
And of course, earlier tonight, Bruce Wayne said that in a thing with the exact same cadence in his voice. And that was like, Bane already suspected, but this was like the, I know who this is. I can, I can go there okay. now. So he knows. Batman panics, his fists shake, and he goes about smashing all of Bane's equipment. He tosses some explosives around the room and leaves, <laughs> leaves as the base blows up. <laughs> shit, shit, fuck. Delete history, delete history. It is very much, that is the, that is the vibe. He's like, bang, bang, bang. He like punches screens, it tosses some stuff and leaves as it blows up behind Fuck, him. Fuck, mom's coming. <laughs> the tab isn't closing fast enough. <laughs> so yeah. You die a mm. But if Bane knows our secret identity, that means that the back cave is no longer secure. We call Alfred and give him a heads up, telling him to secure himself in the cave. But for the first time in the game, Bruce doesn't know what to do. Alfred asks and he just says, I don't know. I, I'm on my way to you and we'll figure something out. And just like that, Firefly chooses the worst time to make his move. <laughs> He's taken hostages on the Pioneer Bridge. Jim Gordon and his men have arrived and cordoned the whole thing off, but there are bombs planted all around. And he, he doesn't know, basically. So Batman finds Jim underneath the bridge, coordinating his men. Don't send in your men, Batman barks. Fireflies rigged the whole bridge to blow. You're the reason these people are in danger, Jim says. He's doing this for the bounty on your head. Give yourself up. I'm guessing Firefly didn't get the memo that Joker's in prison, so we'll, <laughs> we'll be paying that bounty. <laughs> Shouldn't have jetted out of that meeting so fast. Yeah. It's fine. I feel like you get out of these prisons pretty quickly. Yeah. So you're just going to have to wait a couple days. Yeah. So, you know yeah. what it's like when you're working for yourself, like invoicing and stuff, you know, you expect payment to take a while, don't you? Batman is like, I'm going to bring in Firefly myself. Don't send anyone else in until I tell you it's safe. No, you will stay the hell out of this, Gordon barks back. You hear me? But Batman's already gone. As we sort the bombs, we get onto Gordon's comms, and reluctantly, the two men work together to deactivate them. Mm. Unfortunately, Gordon also doesn't listen to Batman, though, and some of his men get killed. We also learn that the hostages Batman's rescuing are already telling anyone who listened about the hero who saved their lives. So they're like, the Batman saved me, he's a hero, you know, and mm. people are starting to think about that. Um, and when Batman learns this, he grumbles to himself that he's not looking for praise. Um, eventually, we face off against Firefly. He zooms about the bridge and is like, How do you want to die? A quick explosion or a nice slow burn? He looks like, he looks like a Metal Gear villain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he does look like a Metal Gear villain. He absolutely does. Yeah, you're spot on with that. And um, so Batman points out that, you know, Joker's behind bars. There's no prize money. So like, what's even the point? Bro, and Firefly responds like, don't hate me, Batman. I just want to melt your face. And as he fires, he just loves fire, this guy. That is his entire yeah. thing. And uh, he fires his flamethrower and he shrieks and he's like, he's melting, melting. Yeah, it's great. The villains in this haven't been very multifaceted, have they? <laughs> <laughs> apart, from one or, apart from one or two, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, or, or while we're fighting him, he'll say things like, Who's having a blast? You are Batman in the face! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, we, we, we beat Firefly. It's it's fun, but it's fine. He's falling out of the sky. He goes, I hate Mondays. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So, eventually, Batman punches Firefly enough that he falls asleep, rips off his jetpack, and tosses it to the side. And he's like, you need a new hobby. Bam! And knocks him out. And some new teeth. How was that one, Alfred? <laughs> and also, you're really ugly or something. Yeah. <laughs> so after the fight, Gordon arrives and Batman tosses him the death. Oh, that's an iconic Batman pose. It's a good look. Uh, and he, he, he says to Gordon, he goes, you didn't listen. And Gordon's like, I'm not big on taking orders from wanted men. And Batman goes, I'm not big on taking orders from cops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a beep where the two men watch each other for a sec. And then Gordon starts to grumble and he goes... Look, between the two of us, we covered it pretty well. He leans down to pick up the detonator, and when he looks back, boop, Batman gone. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Yeah. I'm always reminded of the college humor sketches of whenever he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, into the Batwing we go, returning to the Batcave. Alfred, Bruce calls in. Alfred, can you hear me? And then over the comms crackles Bane's voice. I am in your house, Bruce. Come home. Say your goodbyes. Once you've had time to turn grief to anger, then you'll be ready to face me. I have left enough life in your butler for some final words, if you hurry. The Batcave is on fire when we return. Bane and his men are gone, but the place is completely trashed. And as for Alfred, he's been crushed under some rubble. The light starts to leave his eyes. He wheezes out the last of his breath as Bruce, Bruce moves over to him. Alfred? And Ma Ma Bruce try kind of tries to bring him out and the body starts to turn limp. And he goes, Alfred, I'm, I'm so sorry. Alfred coughs and looks at him. 
He doesn't see the bat. All he sees is the boy he cared for all these years. His expression softens for a second, tears well up in his eyes. And with his last breath, he says, Don't add me to the weight you carry. Except not his last breath because he's in the next two games. Have you ever seen Alfred it? dies. Are we saying that he's a Jarvis now? Bruce's world shatters. For an instant, the Batcave is replaced once more with Crime Alley. Rage and grief overtake him and Bruce smashes one of his fists into the ground. The shot gloves he stole from the electrocutioner spark and he has an idea. Using the shot gloves as defibrillators... <laughs> He, yeah, he can't help himself. He punches Alfred in the face. Mean, meanwhile, the fucking cops are trying to call him while he's doing this. It's actually kind of neat. This um, it's not worth really going into, but like the, the 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 GCPD dispatch, it starts as like the dispatch of the night the Waynes died, and you hear them going like "shots fired" to Crime Alley, "shots fired," and as we flash back to working on Alfred, it's modern day GCPD being like, "Oh, there's a breakout or a bane or Firefly or whatever," you know. So, um, and it's it's really really cool. So. Um, he, he restarts Alfred's heart, and with a gasp and a swell of the music, Alfred is revived. What are we supposed to assume the injury is here? Because I th- I'm pretty sure shot gloves are used to correct an irregular beat in a heart. Presumably, Alfred has had some of his <laughs> internal organs crushed. <laughs> what is this supposed to have done? I thought it was cool when I played <laughs> played the video game. I liked this. So yeah. So and we, we this is all interactive. We are doing this. So How dare you analyze the scene? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sometime later, once Alfred has recovered, he finally reaches across the aisle to heal the fracture in his relationship with Bruce. He tells Bruce that he knows he hasn't always been supportive of all of this, but he understands now. Bane showed him that true monsters exist. Monsters only the Batman can defeat. We hear in the radio the Joker has taken over Blackgate Prison and Bane is there. Go, he breathes. They need you out there. I can't defend Gotham, Bruce sighs. I can't even defend my own home. Master Bruce, now is not the time for doubt. I can't do it. I can't stop them. No, you, you can't. Not on your own. But it's high time you realise that you are a man, not an island. And a man's strength comes not just from brawn or intelligence, but also his allies. They need you. Bruce steals his resolve. No, he says. And then he looks at Alfred. They need us. Mm. They need the Batman. But one last side quest for you before we finish up, because you might remember Black Mask ran away when Batman and Cockman had gone to a brawl, so okay. here's what he's been up to. Uh, so it turns out he's been stashing drugs in some reskinned Titan containers from Arkham City. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to destroy them uh, before going to a reskinned church from Arkham City uh, to arrest him once and for all. Um, he, he shows up and he's like, well, I was hoping you'd show up. And Batman's like, one way or another, I'm taking you in. Now we can do this the easy way, or the, yeah, 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 or the hard way, I get it, but I think you know my choice. Batman punches him in the face, and Sionis folds. He ties him up for the cops. Hooray! Anyway, let's enter the end game. <laughs> uh, that's literally all that happens. Um, so, yeah, part eight, and I've just called this Blackgate. Batman soars down to Blackgate prison. Joker and his men have run through it, effectively transforming it into a loose asylum. Mattresses line the walls to form padded cells. Streams of toilet paper coat the walls to make them white. I think that this is a metaphor for how mattress shops are actually drug laundering operations. (laughs) Ha! I mean, what what this actually is a metaphor for, if I'm going to be that guy, is it's a metaphor for the fact that Joker's presence has evolved Gotham in one night. Yeah. We were at Blackgate at the beginning, and it looked like a normal prison. Now it looks like Chaos Central. After tonight, Gotham will never be the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so we're going to continue on uh, from my wanky interpretation. Um, taking a leaf out of Penguin's book, he's also redesigned the canteen into a gladiator arena. An electric chair sits on a raised platform. Inmates bray and yell on ledges all around. This is his final game. It's a very good one. Joker stands holding Warden Joseph hostage. Seems like everything has come full circle. Let him go, Batman shouts. Ah, listen, listen, listen. I, I understand you, Joker says. You, you had a chance to let me die and you didn't take it. I bet right now you're wishing you had. I mean, I have killed... A lot of people! I've brought the city to its knees! Bane enters, shirtless, the venom ready to pump into his body. Let's do this, he grunts. A strange device is attached to his hand. Oh, 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 Joker says. All right, all right, all right. So, what our friend Bane holds in his hand is a heart monitor. 
Once it's turned on, every beat of his vacant little heart will charge the battery on this electric chair. <laughs> Joker sits in the chair and straps himself in. And when it's fully charged, I'll go zap! So either you kill Bane, I won't, Batman shouts. I won't kill. You will, Bane rumbles, leaping down to the arena. You will fight me with all of your resolve, or you will die. Someone is going to die. You, me, or the clown. The question of which one of us it is, is in your hands. Oh, and just in case you are thinking of getting smart, try to, you know, remove the heart monitor and kaboom! More minced meat on the walls than a hamburger. So, yeah, uh, we kill Bane or Joker dies. What do we do? This is, this is Batman going to get his Chris Eccleston, everybody lives moment, but it's for saving serial killers instead. Uh, yeah, legit. So, uh, Bane activates the heart monitor and we fight. Um, we'll see on the TVs behind here, it's like live broadcasting it to the inmates cool. so they can follow along. It's very cool. Very comic booky. It is. It's very comic booky. Bane kicks Batman's ass. He activates the venom, pins us to the ground, and just as it looks like he's going to crush our chest, da 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 da. Jim Gordon arrives just in the nick of time. Gun, he doesn't really know what he's getting himself into. Yeah. <laughs> Gun raised. Um, like he's like, what is going on? He goes to unstrap Joker from the chair, but when he gets too close, Joker like knocks him, grabs the gun, smacks his head off the side, and then takes him hostage. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jim you Gordon. can't kill me. Only I can kill me. Jo Jim Gordon came in here like John Wick, but you know, I feel like he lacks the the capabilities. He almost like like sniffs his face and he goes, oh, Jim, 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 Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Have a seat, Jimbo. We'll fry together like two little potato latkes. <laughs> so Bane glares at Batman as he presses down with his boot. May you find peace and death that you did not find in life. And between gasps, Bats activates his shot gloves. I'm not looking for peace, he manages, and zaps Bane's ankle. The two grapple and Batman uses his shot gloves to stop Bane's heart. The electric chair loses all power. He does it. He stops his heart. Pfft. Yeah. Dead Bane. The game's over, Joker. Let Captain Gordon go. And Joker's like, Oh my god, I can't believe you did it. You really are something. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, I've got stockings to stuff, mistletoe to hang, and about 15 skyscrapers to blow up before sunrise. And he runs away. Um, Batman swallows his pride and calls out to Jim. And he's like, Gordon, I need your help to stop the Joker. Our help? You're the so-called vigilante, or is one kill enough for you tonight? And he gestures at Bane's lifeless body. I told you that's not how I do things. Bane's in cardiopulmonary arrest. And he goes, I, I, have, I have only a few minutes to resuscitate him before it's too late. Gordon falters at that. He doesn't know what to say. And Batman goes, go! And Gordon races on to try and head off Joker. So we bring Bane back to life, but he is not How do we happy. bring him back? By bringing back his heart. These gloves are so darn useful. They yeah. no wonder that he uses them so much in subsequent games. <laughs> at least, at least for this time, it's making sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, more so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so Bane's raging when we resuscitate him. He flies to a mindless rage immediately, grabs Batman by the throat. <laughs> Batman switches him off again. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so Bane's like, you leave me no choice, Mr. Wayne. He takes the inhibitor of his Venom gear. He grows ten sizes. His veins burst. His whole body morphs and pulses as he towers over Batman. Ooh, I've been he there, buddy, over Christmas, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he can barely speak. He just roars and smashes Batman through the ground into the cells below. This is a stealth boss with a huge monstrous Bane charging through the tunnels hunting for us. It's brilliant. Through his wit, grit and determination, Bats manages to lure him into shock therapy, tangle him up in the machine and blast him with electricity. Stunned and dazed, his final words before he falls unconscious are The Batman. I will. I must find the Batman. Who... Is the Batman? Oh, is he forgotten? Oh, Remember, okay. Venom, Venom abuse it will give you amnesia. Yeah, they included that very inconvenient detail earlier. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Very convenient yeah. detail. So Batman shakes off his bruises and he goes, "Good luck with that." And finally, we find Joker in the prison cathedral for the end game. He's off his head, laughing so hard that he's crying. He's convinced that Batman killed Bane. He's convinced that they're now on the same path. <laughs> what a night! Batman doesn't hesitate, he grab, doesn't speak, grabs Joker by the throat, smashes him into a pillar. 
Oh, fresh off the kill and back for more, eh? Batman relishes his next words. Bane's still alive. Joker checks his monitor. Now that's not funny. He pulls out a gun and presses it to Batman's skull. All this, all this rage, all directed at me, and for what? You know, if you'd actually let me finish a sentence, you might learn something. You might learn that we're not so different. Bam. Crack. Pow. <laughs> Batman unleashes his fury and beats Joker into the dust. With every hit, Joker laughs and croons. Yes, come on, don't stop now. Beat me till your knuckles bleed. <laughs> and why stop there? You know, there's only one way to stop me. And with one last smack, Batman knocks him out. And then a familiar voice. Any one of my guys would have killed him, Jim Gordon says, entering the church. The city deserves better than that, Batman says, handing Gordon Joker's gun. Debatable. I don't kill, I just severely maim. <laughs> My daughter thinks you're a hero, Jim says quietly, and then cocks the bun. The... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a scene in American Pie. <laughs> Damn it. I was, like, was going to say, I was pretty sure that was a bit of a Freudian slip. <laughs> he, co yeah, yeah. <laughs> he cocks the gun at Batman. Please, save that for after we finish and go to bed. <laughs> But I still have to bring you in. Gordon's radio crackles. Gordon, come in. What's your 20? Gordon looks away for a sec to respond. I'm in the chapel. We got Joker. And when he looks back, Batman is gone. Y you caught him? The voice says. How'd you do that? And Gordon holsters his weapon and just kind of looks at an open window nearby. And he goes, I, uh, I had some help. As we fade out, we hear Gordon speaking to Barbara. I keep asking myself why I didn't bring him in. And the truth is... How could I have... I, <laughs> well, he just says, I let him go, which I don't think is true. No, I was going to say, how would he have brought up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I let him go because of you to Barbara, because you think he's a hero. I used to think I can't change this city. I can't change the rotten cops I lead, but maybe, maybe I can give them something to believe in. His eyeline is drawn up to the moon where he sees Batman soaring by. Maybe he can give them something to believe in. Ooh. And the credits roll. Hey, Dad, you think you want to be a Batgirl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part nine, Cold, Cold Heart. Oh. So Arkham Origins got some DLC. Cold, Cold Heart released in April 2014. It kicks off on New Year's Eve, just seven suit. days. It is a dope suit, yeah. Seven days after the events of Arkham Origins. I will point out now because I haven't written into the script because you've noted the suit. This is a new suit. I, I know the moment when he gets it, but the entirety of this DLC until like the last third, Batman keeps calling Alfred and is like, is the new suit ready yet? <laughs> like 10 times. And every time I was like, it's coming, it's coming. And eventually when you get it, it is worth it. For anyone listening along, um, it's it's the sort of same bat cowl and the color scheme's all the same, but it's almost semi-mech. He's yeah. got like huge robotic uh, inserts into the arms and where the gap is normally in the cowl, there's a sort of metallic faceplate covering his mouth mm. uh, it's pretty cool it's like yeah lots of yeah orange Green, neon and, yeah orange v blue and it looks very cool i'm a guess is, is is that uh our boy arnold arnold do you mean mr freeze arnold schwarzenegger yes it's mr freeze so yes this is the mr freeze deal this is the governor of california <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you're about to learn uh why um mr freeze is neil's favorite villain did you say uh, he's up. He's up there. No, Mudman is his favorite. Oh, sorry. Clayface, yeah. I love Clayface, yeah. but yeah, no. Um, Fr Freeze is definitely up there from 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 the nineties cartoon, and this does him well. Prior to uh, just to give you a little backstory here, so Paul Dini, I keep mentioning, did the uh, Arkham uh, Asylum and Arkham City stories. Paul Dini not involved in Arkham Origins. Um, which is fine, um, it's, it's whatever, but the, the point I'm making is that the story you're about to hear about Mr. Freeze is a Paul Dini creation for the animated series and it won awards, it was so good. Um, he took a two-dimensional villain who was a man who was like, I just like freezing stuff, <laughs> and he gave him an entire story that people love. I'm not wanting to overhype this for you because it's you're not going to be crying at it, it's just he's a really good Batman villain with a really cool story. Um, so we're going to get into it. So... We open with a dark-haired woman encased in ice, Nora Freeze. 
The camera pans around and we see her husband Victor, aka Mr. Freeze, watching over her as he prepares to leave his lab. Yes, once again, Mr. Freeze, Victor Freeze is a man who luckily his surname yeah, ties yeah, in yeah, 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 with, with his gimmick, absolutely. but yes. Um, much like Edward Nigma. <laughs> so, meanwhile, while all this is happening, while he's looking at his wife and he turns away to, to leave his lab, Bruce Wayne and Alfred stand in Wayne Manor. Oh, he's smiling! He's smiling. For the first time in this game! They're surrounded by party guests. Their New Year's Eve party has been merged with an award ceremony. Tonight, the Wayne Foundation is awarding Humanitarian of the Year to this man, Ferris Boyle. Compassion, Ferris says in his speech. That's the heart that Goth Corp was built on. It's why we're called the People Company. Uh, there's nothing with corp in it that's going to no, turn no. out well, no. Did you say Goth Corp? <laughs> I think that was a hot topic, goth wasn't corp. it? Is it just yeah. a bunch of fucking goths? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so I, I did think earlier when Alfred was having his emotional reconnection with Bruce, it sounded like the parent of a goth. It was like, I might not understand it, <laughs> but I support you and I love you. Yeah. So uh, applause, applause, applause. Uh, Bruce is all done up in his tux and Alfred stands with him and he's like, Mr. Boyle seems to be after your title as Gotham's biggest philanthropic industrialist. And he jokes and he winks and he nudges him and it's like, oh, the boys. And uh, Bruce is like, Gotham needs more people like him. And he smiles, and it's clear that he means it. Ferris comes down and he shakes Bruce's hand. And he's like, Bruce, I am blown away by your support. And Bruce is like, well, it's well deserved. You're going to change the world, Ferris. And Ferris is like, hey, we'll change it together, right? More applause, more drinks. It doesn't bode well happened. for this guy that he's not in any of the other games, does it? Out of curiosity, <laughs> out of curiosity, because yeah. I don't actually know, the fuck do the Waynes do? Like, what is their business? All sorts. Literally, name it. Uh, yeah, they're 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 in company. civil civil engineering, weapons and tech and research and yeah. like science, biomedical. They're like Just, everything. Yeah. Name it. Whatever the plot needs them to be yeah. doing. More applause, more drinks. Everyone's having a lovely time. What could possibly ruin this? Well, how about a fucking freeze ray? <laughs> <laughs> So armed henchmen race in behind a wall of ice that's torn a hole in the side of Wayne Manor. Notably, they've got penguins on their uniforms. <laughs> behind them, Mr. Freeze enters. He smacks a guest out of the way, freezes another, and a, that freeze is capitalized in my script. I think every time I've written the word freeze is capitalized, just in case I get confused. <laughs> and as you can imagine, I say the word freeze a lot. That's a really goofy looking suit. It is, yeah, it's, it's proper prototype, it's humongous. He's a tiny little man. And, um, and yeah, so he hits a guy, freezes another, and at the top of his lungs, he yells, Bring me Ferris Boyle! <laughs> Bruce runs away, deeper into Wayne Manor. He finds Alfred fighting <laughs> off... Some, yeah. He finds Alfred fighting off some of Penguin's thugs himself. Penguins? Uh, Penguin's thugs himself. Yes. Why are why is Penguin here? Good question. Well, but Penguin's thugs are here. Penguin and... and uh, They're both ice-flavoured. Yeah. They, they, were, they were in the same bit of... Arkham City, weren't they? Or, or well, yes, but uh, Hatton, uh, yeah. Hatton Penguin captured Freeze? Yeah, yeah. I, that make me this is off. before all of that shit, though, remember? Bruce runs away, uh, and he finds Alfred fighting some of the thugs, and the thugs are like, Hey, old man, take take it easy! And Alfred's like, swinging a fire poker, poker, barking like, Are you cowards afraid of an old man? And then, pang, bow, whack. They head through to the study, where Bruce opens his secret entrance to the Batcave. Quick fun note, we see that in the comics, the way to open the passage to the Batcave is by turning the hands of the clock to the exact time that his parents were For killed. Yeah, that was so miserable, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, emo. He uh, he suits up, fights his way through some goons, gets any guests he can into a safe room, and when he goes back to visit Alfred and the hostages in his bat suit, um, <laughs> <laughs> in front of people, he's like, uh, "Sir, um, are you all right?" And Alfred goes, "Of course." Thanks to you, the hero of Christmas Eve, <laughs> who I have never met before, but only read about in the paper. The hero of Christmas uh, Eve, who good. definitely eats his Christmas dinner. Uh, good, good to meet you too, old man. Yeah. My friend Bruce Wayne called me on the telephone. <laughs> also, yeah, are we to assume that this is the New Year's immediately following? Yes. 
Seven Hi. days later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Bruce, like, kind of cuts him off, and he's like, all right, geez, geez, just barricade the doors when I leave. Um, eventually, oh, Vicky Vale's here as well. There she is. Oh, um, bestie. Yeah, she doesn't say anything. Uh, she tries, she's like, do you want to do an interview? And Batman's like, nah, <laughs> leaves. <laughs> so, eventually. You're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to remember that phrase. <laughs> so, eventually, we find Ferris Boyle, our old pal who just won the award. Uh, he's being set upon by some of the goons, and we rescue him, but not before Freeze interrupts. He freezes, capital F, he freezes Batman in place and tells him, I have no quarrel with you, I just want Boyle. Then you crash the wrong party, Batman growls. Ferris immediately recognizes Freeze and he's like, Victor? Also, why would Batman say that you crashed the wrong party? Yeah, yeah. My friend Bruce Wayne's. <laughs> Yeah, Wouldn't you know that this is the party my best friend Bruce Wayne? So I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so he's like, Victor, what what are you doing? And Freeze is like, I just require a moment of your time. He frog marches Ferris out of the building. I feel like there are better ways to get a moment of your friend's time. Well, he goes, I just require a moment of your time. He frog marches Ferris out of the building. And by the time bats can break free of the ice, it's too late. They're gone. So, out into Gotham we go. We see the Freeze's various ice weapons are on the city streets now. Penguin is selling them to the highest bidder. We learn that Penguin gave Freeze his men in return for the tech. It's why he's got henchmen for us to fight, basically. Uh, we also hear some rumblings... Because Freeze doesn't generically have henchmen, does he? No, he doesn't. No, no. So these are... He's, he's paid Penguin with the weapons. We also hear some rumblings that Ferris's company, Goth Corp, has been making weapons? Whoa. But Bruce is... He shrugs it off and he's like, that's bullshit. Goth Corp doesn't make weapons. Goth Corp's the people company. It's a goody corporation not a baddie corporation, um, but it looks like Goth Corp is where Freeze has taken Ferris, so it's our next stop. Uh, Goth Corp is a big dungeon designed just for this DLC, which is really, really cool. Um, Batman fights his way through, gets a new suit called the XE suit. Um, for, so good. Uh, I think it's like for ex it has, extreme. Yeah. It has even shorter booty shorts. Uh, it, it, does, <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah. That, like, crop it looks like it looks his like his the thighs of this suit are so <laughs> thick that the, the 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 bottom of the shorts is sort of rolled up the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so the point of the suit is that it it lets him withstand freezing temperatures, and it also the fist, the shock Extreme fists. Extreme elements. Extreme element probably makes sense, but you can withstand freezing temperatures, and the shock gloves are now fire gloves. They can melt ice. Heat gloves, they can melt ice. He doesn't need to stop anybody's heart this yeah. time. <laughs> he pulled those off fireflies. He just needs to melt their freezing heart and show them the true meaning of Christmas. Fire! It's, it's actually really neat, this, because the anima the takedown animations are different when you're using them as opposed to the shot gloves. Like, he'll, he'll like, melt people a little bit. Like, not not bad, but, Just like, a little bit melted. Garfield, is that you? Do you, remember, do you remember what you said about Elizabeth when she a little bit melted one person? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, good point, good point. It's it's not bad. It's like it's it's like they'll you'll like sear them like stop oh and they'll God. they'll like go down. Yeah, what? it's great. He, he brands them. Is this <laughs> a, a branding thing? No, no, it's not. A he puts his hand on them. He leaves it, and there's like a scorched bat. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a Batman film that would make the Batman do that. That would it's, be it's horrendous. Think, like, they've got freeze guns, so he'll just like in the anime the, the takedown animation will be like he grabs the freeze gun and it like melts and it uh, releases yeah. steam scalding their yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it's just a nice attention. To detail. I don't remember exactly yeah. what the animations yeah, yeah. are. Okay. But it's all a good time. Anyway, in the center of the building he finds Freeze and Penguin. Give me Boyle or I'll freeze this entire room! Freeze roars at Penguin. It seems Cobblepot has double-crossed Victor. I don't want to hurt you, but I will! I know you won't! Yeah, Penguin yells back. Boyle's got the codes you need and I ain't giving him up unless I get what he's giving you! What's behind this door is of no interest to you. This will not end well for you, Cobblepot. Mama charges in, beats up the goons, and Freeze uses it as the perfect distraction. He steps out from cover and freezes Penguin and all of his men, grabs Ferris, and leaves. And Batman's like, I'll give you one chance to let him go. And he starts marching towards Freeze. And Freeze turns and he goes, threats are meaningless to a man who has lost everything. He blasts a huge wall of ice between us, and off he goes. Thankfully, Batman's new suit means that he can just melt a bat-shaped hole through it so we can follow. But he makes a real point to not unfreeze Penguin, despite how much he begs. He's right I mean, there. Would you, would you not be dead after five minutes frozen in a block of ice? I don't know, but I, all I know is that Penguin really begs. He's like, please, Why? please let me out. Um, Alfred rings us up and he's like, sir, 
Penguin seemed quite certain that Goth Corp is holding some super weapon. And Bruce shuts him down. He's like, no, Ferris spoils my friend. <laughs> he doesn't make weapons. My friends that. over at Evil Corp would never do something like yeah, that. I They're mean, a family there. Legit. He goes like, I know him. Call the GCPD. Tell them to prepare a gurney. They're going to need it for freeze. So he's like, he's going to go fucking break some legs, I guess. Um, so deeper into the lab we go, eventually making it to Victor Freeze's old lab. And it's here we learn exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it. Goth Corp is making weapons, cryogenic weapons, just like the one Freeze is using. But Victor wasn't just building weapons here, he was mainly doing secret research on Huntington's disease. His wife, Nora, has it. To prevent Nora from dying, Victor froze her in cryostasis. Ferris Boyle hired Victor to help advance this secret cryo-weapons program and agreed to devote Goth Corp resources to finding a cure for Nora. But it soon became clear that Ferris Boyle had no intention of honouring that agreement. Victor stopped working on weapons and started working on curing the disease instead. Ferris came down to the lab one day with some guards planning to strong-arm Victor and a fight ensued. As Batman describes it, a cryochemical cocktail altered Victor's metabolism. The whole lab became frozen and super deadly. Boyle escaped, locked down the lab, and Victor designed his mech suit so he could leave. All of this violence, Batman mutters, and he realizes how wrong he's been and who the true monster in this tale obviously is, Ferris. And he's like, he's just trying to save his dying wife. Nora's still here. He needs Boyle's security access to get his wife out of Goth Corp. That's all he wants. And now you're going to stop him, Alfred points out. I have to. Are you still going to need that gurney? I am, but not for Victor. <laughs> Reaching the heart of Goth Corp, we confront Freeze and Ferris. It's a wide chamber where Nora's body is suspended in cryostasis. All I want is to get Nora and leave, Ferris. Give me the access codes, Freeze says. I'm not giving you the code, Ferris gnashes. I'll see you both dead before I give you a goddamn thing. Why? You're. You're a pee, because he's an asshole. You're a peon, Victor. A plebe. What are you without me, huh? You got nothing. No money, no resources. Everything around you, I built. So all I'm hearing is that he's wasting his money keeping this gal frozen in his place to be petty. But to be fair, Victor has cracked cryostasis. This is an example of cryostasis working. He probably wants to, like, use that for further experiments. It's a bunch of stuff. Also, yeah, he's just a petty, horrible little man. He's just a grubby, little, grim Jeff Bezos rat boy. So, like, <laughs> fuck him. No, that's Batman. <laughs> so, no. So, Victor uh, steps out of the shadows. Uh, sorry, Batman steps out of the shadows, and he's like, Victor, you have to let him go. And Freeze is like, I am taking my wife! You cannot stop me! I know the truth. Batman replies calmly, and so will the police. Boyle will face judgment for his crimes. Freeze opens fire with his freeze ray, and Batman leaps behind cover. Nothing matters, he says. Do you understand? Nothing matters but my Nora. Nora wouldn't want this, Batman replies. No, what she wants is to live a long life in the warmth of the sun. Her hand in mine, and now all she'll get is this icy touch of a man whose emotions run as cold as the blood in his veins. Q boss fight. It's good, not as good as the Arkham City fight, but it repeats the same gimmick. Freeze learns our attacks, we respond accordingly. Uh, during the fight, a panel ruptures and the lab starts to explode. A cryogenic weapon freezes us in place, but before it does, Batman shatters Freeze's helmet. He falls to the ground, too weak to attack. Freeze, on the precipice of losing everything, desperately just starts crawling towards Nora. Oh, and then Ferris steps into view. Please! Freeze gasps. You can save her. You just have to bypass the... No, Victor. She dies. But I'll keep you alive long enough to see her go. Ferris picks up a pipe. And he starts to beat Freeze to death. And as he does, Batman shatters and ruptures the ice. Because like it, it's like this, and you're mashing A to try and break out of it. As you're doing it, uh, Freeze, you, Freeze's health bar at the top is going down with every hit that Ferris is doing. You're like trying to get out of this to save him. Batman throws himself forwards, he grabs the pipe, spins it in his hand, and cracks Ferris hard in the jaw, breaking it. He hits the deck. Take a seat, he says, his voice like a storm. Humanitarian. Using his gadgets, he manages to restore the cryogenic containment for Nora. She's going to be okay, but she's still frozen. I'm sorry, Victor, he says, kneeling down and repairing Victor Freeze's suit, saving his life. I can't give you peace. 
but I can give you justice. And the credits roll. Mm. Cool. So, like, Boyle presumably will get taken away to jail. Um, Freeze will also get taken to jail, but Nora will be looked after. I mean, yeah, best mission in this game. Uh, yeah, it's from great. how you described it. It's a really good mission. It's a fuck ton longer than I've described yeah. it. I've cut a lot of dead air out. You go get parts, you build a laser to break through some ice at one sure. point. It's a whole lot of shit. But um, it's really good, and I really like that, and it's a good story. But this is kind of what they did in the animated series. Um, except in the animated series, they don't even pretend the Ferris Boyle is a goodie at the start. Straight away, Bruce goes to meet him in the animated clip, and he's like... So, uh, like, well, what are you going to do? Like, charity or whatever. And Ferris Ball is like, nah, I hate poor people. <laughs> <laughs> like, straight away. They don't even pretend. Which makes sense. you got 20 minutes, right? You can't play your, like, is he a goodie, is he a baddie, while also telling Freeze's heart- heart-wrenching story. Uh, but, yeah. What do you think, Chase? Story-wise, this is the best of the three so far. Mm, um, that's, that's cool. I that said, that. overall, I still think that Asylum's my favorite. I totally understand that because Asylum is Wonder? Yeah. 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 It's silly. Yeah. But I, I think it's mainly because as much I, I, I love a good villain origin, especially. Mm. So I loved all the Joker stuff, but Joker's not yet in his silly goofy mode. Not in his prime. He's not in his prime. He's he's yeah. he's, he's I think he gets there and I he's think there. he's but well, he's not I funny. Think, he's I, not I, he's I, th- I, I think that him in the chair at the end is verging on, but yeah. he's not quite there yet. And I like yeah. he is different. At the end of this game, than he is at the start. Yeah, like he is. He is. They yeah. both and they both are to to a degree. Um, yeah, it was the one I remembered least. I really liked it. I hope you really liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. I'm trying to remember to do that. Uh, before we finish, here's a little tease of what's coming next. I don't know who you're supposed to be, but in case you didn't notice, this building's business hours are over. Oh, I noticed, and my business never sleeps. I'm nocturnal. Chase, what did you think of that tease? Christmas is dead. <laughs> Boy, we need a rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to sleep. Um, and then we'll be back uh, with two final Arkham games. Thank you very much for listening. And we will see you in the next one. Farewell, children. Good night. <laughs> Great.